Okay, so I will also start the recording if that's okay. Groovy. With you. I just I just did this with somebody yesterday. I, I don't usually record through Zoom. Normally I do Skype, but uh, people are doing more Zoom than anything nowadays, so no worries at all. All right. Oh, Al Alex, you're muted. Yeah, I know. Alex. <laughs> Oh, oh he's, eat, he's eating. He doesn't want to. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess so. We'll... Okay. Do we want to start already? I don't know. Do you? Yeah, I mean, sure. Mark, if you're well, feeling I guess ready. We can introduce... I guess, Alex, do you want to introduce yourself? I. Sure. I'm just going to um, pull up quick time and start my recording. Okay, well, I guess um, I'll start it. Um, well, hi, Mark. I'm Hannah. I'm um, a graduate student at um, Toronto. McGill. No, not at Toronto anymore. Oh. I, I moved to McGill in Montreal. Ah. Um, yeah, I, I guess I, I study cosmology. Cool. I guess a different cosmology from what you, what you work on. <laughs> <laughs> you, mean, you mean astronomy? <laughs> yeah, the... Uh, is it just straight up astronomy or is it, or is it astrophysics? Um, it's, it's actually, I guess, more than astrophysics. I don't look at like particular objects. I, I more so study like the large over, overarching structure of the universe and like how it started and sure. where it's going. And uh, yeah. It's a cool field. I, mean, I, I think I chose the wrong field. <laughs> Why would you choose? I chose fluid dynamics. So I'm still at U of T. I'm a PhD student at U of T now. Mm. And yeah, so I study fluids, trying to simulate how they flow on a computer because fluids are quite complicated. Yeah. So what inspired you guys to get a hold of me? Well, really, well, Alex was the uh, catalyst of all of this. You just got drug in? I, <laughs> she did, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but she was excited to talk to you too i don't pretend that you weren't hannah <laughs> no i i mean i i've been aware of of uh the flat earth community and um yeah i guess it, it's it was all it was interesting to me i guess as someone who was studying science it was interesting to me that there was kind of People... like a, an alternative science being mm. yeah being uh created sure and uh but you know i i think alex alex's interest was definitely more profound than mine i've been i've been um well i'll tell you uh, about a year ago a friend added me to a flat earth group on on facebook just as a joke mm -hmm. and uh well he he always took it as a joke you know i think you're used to that a lot of people think it's a big joke right oh but it's the and, opening line of the clues literally the yeah. opening sentence is you will probably think this is a joke Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, but you know what, reading through it, I thought, you know, a lot of these people are, you know, they're not completely crazy, you know, like they have some clever ideas. So, you know, I thought it was, I thought it was interesting. I think obviously I agree with it and I don't uh, agree with those views, but, you know, I think there's an interesting conversation to be had. You sure. Know? Hey, I'm, I'm impressed that you even got this far. To, to be honest, a lot of people don't, uh, especially if you do graduate work uh, along these lines. I mean, if you've gone that far, as I've, I've told people in other interviews, it's like, you're not coming back from that. But that's all right. Again, if you want to know what's in our heads, if you want to pick our brains a little, I'm one of the guys to talk to about it. I I'm personally am curious, like, do you talk to scientists about this often or do okay, scientists let's, often let's like push you interview. away? Hannah, yeah. Hey, okay. The well, I this guess is the well, question I want to have on. I, I, okay. That that's fine. You guys start wherever you want it. <laughs> Should we get so, started? Do you guys, do, you guys yeah. do you guys have a list of questions, or are you sharing the questions, or? Yeah, we have like a general idea. Like we went over before about what kind of questions we want to ask you, but. Uh, okay. But we're also open for the conversation yeah. to kind it, of go we, we wherever want it, to be it goes. Of the flowing thing. And and by the way, if I start going off into the weeds somewhere, if I start going off road, let me know, and you know, circle circle back if you can, because there are a lot of tangents and I didn't know how much time you wanted to get, dedicate to this. 
Um, but we can, if you want to go long, we can, we can go long, or if you want to cut it short because you can't, you know, your brain's going to blow up. That's fine too. <laughs> Either awesome. way. I'm I'm projecting maybe between 45 minutes and an hour if that seems to work. Sure. Sure. Okay. But yeah, I mean if it goes Amazing. longer it goes longer, if it doesn't yeah. it doesn't. If we get into the weeds, we get into the weeds. By the way, it's a that's a very nice globe behind you. I used to collect those, believe it or not. Really? I used to collect my whole condo was covered with world maps and I was a big fan of antique globes. I was yeah. one of the worst when it came to that. I mean, I had global <laughs> bookends. I had full-blown. What happened, would... Mark? What happened? So well, where exactly. did all of those go? You should have, exactly. that could have been, you know, you could have signed all those globes and that would have been a real piece of memorabilia. I, I did signed... sign a few of them and, oh, okay. and gave them away to people back in uh, 2016, 2017. Uh, but I, in fact, I j used to joke with people. I said, um, you know, because it's like, why do you have so many world maps on your walls? And I said, well, I like them. I think they're iconic, and if I suffer some sort of head injury, I wake up and I know where I am. I'd be like, "Oh, this is where this is the this is the world I live in," and now they're all gone. So that's fine. Anyway, so hit me. What do you got? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, I'll get it started. Let's see. Welcome everybody back to the Beyond the Big Bang podcast. We've heard it all before. COVID is fake, vaccines give you autism, genetically modified foods are bad for you, and of course, the earth is flat. In recent years, there has been a growing mistrust of science, and what's behind this? What can we do about it? You heard us talk about it last week, and today's the week we have a very special guest. I think he's often referred to as the king of flat earth himself. He was a success of the documentary Behind the Curve, He's been a keynote speaker at several Flat Earth conferences, and he has almost 19 million views on his YouTube channel. Mark Sargent, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for inviting me. It is a pleasure. And am I speaking mostly to a Canadian audience? Yes. Yes, so, we're both Canadian. So up, up, there in, up there in Canada, I've heard good things. Yeah, you're up uh, there. Up there. Ooh. Up there. Careful. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I live in Washington. I live in Seattle. So fine. Up, so we're up, up, I up guess. north there, north in the, uh, yeah. In the I center. guess we should probably introduce ourselves ourselves, shouldn't we, Hannah? So sure, yeah. for readers that are unaware, um, I study physics at the University of Toronto. I have an undergraduate degree in physics, and I'm now doing a PhD in computational fluid dynamics. Hannah? I'm Hannah. I'm also a graduate student in physics. I study cosmology. And um, for those of you who are joining us again, uh, you might notice that our usual other two scientists are not joining us today. So usually, uh, Mark, if you're unaware, we have, there are usually four of us. Oh. And um, Gunjan and Trevor decided not to join the conversation today. Uh, they didn't feel like it was something that they wanted to speak about. And, you know, we respect their decision to not be here and May we're going to have ask, a great well, chat. That, that actually circles back to your first, one of your first questions is, do you talk to scientists <laughs> a lot or do they sort of push you away? The other two people uh, in question, what is their specialty? So they both, uh, Trevor has a PhD in uh, numerical relativity in, in astrophysics. Oh, and God, he yeah. now he's, works. He's never going to talk to me. Yeah, <laughs> and he now works at a quantum computing company. Yep, even so worse. he's. Uh, yep. And the other guy. And Gunjan has also a PhD in um, in uh, computational astrophysics, <laughs> and he now works uh, as a machine learning specialist. Yeah, yeah. There's it's again, not not to drag this one out, but that's the reason why we have so few. Why we pick up as many people as we do and why science has a tough time uh, going against us because to most people in that community, it is utterly, and it was, it was talked about in the documentary, it is utterly beneath them. So mm -hmm. why, why would we talk about it? It's, it's absolutely silly. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. Why, why would we even address it? And it's like, fine, we will just keep doing what we're doing by attrition. Uh, and to your point, by the way, your show introduction, you're, you're seeing, you know, how, how, how can you stop or stem the tide of the anti-scientism thing? 
uh, by addressing it, by having a lot more people like you trying, you know, getting out there and doing that. Uh, your friends, and I'm not trying to pick on them, not being here. Yeah, that's, that's part of the problem. We created a model of the known universe that is easier to explain than the heliocentric model. And in doing so, remember the general public, whether you agree with it or not, they like easy. They always have. You guys are in the top whatever 1% of the elite of the academic. And the general population, the mouth-breathing troglodytes out there, you know who they are, they make up the bulk of the population. And so if we show them this with all sorts of explanations on how it works and it makes sense to them, what do you think they're going to go with? They're going to, you know, we, I'll, I'll, I'll make it really quick. <laughs> this, the heliocentric model takes, pff, takes what? Geometry and trigonometry and calculus and quantum mechanics and blah, 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 blah. This, uh, maybe some advanced algebra, maybe a touch of geometry, that's about it, uh, especially if it's enclosed. And that makes it much, much easier to understand. Well, I mean, do you think there's, there's a, I, so as a physicist, I obviously believe that there's a very big place for mathematics in physics and when we're understanding our universe. Sure. Do you think that there is a place for math in a anthropocentric model? It, the math you're talking about, not it doesn't have nearly the um, the prom prominence <laughs> that it does now. No, not even not even close. Again, your average person, it, it, I, your audience is probably much more academic than, than the people that I, I usually talk to. But the average person that gets through, we'll just say high school, not even university. I mean, we barely teach them enough to get by. You know, they, they knew they know nothing really much about chemistry or engineering or biology or physics or any of that stuff. You know, there's a reason so why the chess club. That's an math. interesting question to yeah. me. I mean, did you go, did you ever have the intention of wanting to go to college or do you know of any flat earthers that wanted oh. to go to university? Oh, no, no. Quite, quite a few of them did. I did. I was thrown out my junior year for manufacturing explosives on campus, huh. which was. A I mean, that sounds like a scientist to me. <laughs> yeah. Well. Science, uh, I, I've got such a, a weird paradox in my head when it comes to science. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, mm -hmm. the, the Lord God of media scientists uh, and only th one of three media scientists in the entire world, uh, in the English speaking world anyway. Uh, he said one of the most arrogant things I've ever heard in my life, which is science is true whether or not you believe in it. And I question that a lot. And, and I, what I try to tell people is don't take science at face value. Science is wrong a lot on a, on a lot of things, but they never apologize for it. They just restate things. They just reprioritize well, them. I mean, I think we should be careful. Are we talking about is science wrong or is any particular scientific theory wrong? There you because go. Because science is a process that corrects itself. You're absolutely right. I, I forgot the audience I'm talking to here. Yes, <laughs> there are certain aspects. So, okay, let, let, let's, let's drill down that for a second, which is you want to tell me what the boiling temperature of water is at sea level? Great, fine. I, I can go get a pot and a stove and a thermometer. And I can test that myself and, and figure out what else to do. You want to tell me what the core of the earth looks like? Oh, no, 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 you can't, not even close. I mean, the core of the earth is supposedly 4,000 miles down from where you are now. The deepest hole ever drilled, what is it? Is it 2,000 miles? It's 1,000, 100, 10, it's eight miles. That's the deepest hole ever drilled. And in fact, in the fine print, and you can wiki this all day long, they'll tell you, it's like, oh yeah, we have no idea what's down there. We're just extrapolating from volcanoes. So, okay, why are you well, showing I mean, me not these? just volcanoes, to be fair. Not just volcanoes. We do have seismic data that tells us a good chunk about what's underneath the, the core, the, the uh, surface uh -huh, of the earth. Uh -huh. I mean, so those bands, those perfect 1,000 mile thick bands of red and orange and yellow and white, you, you know exactly what those are. No, you don't. No, you don't. And even if you could, why are you showing me the cross sections of Neptune and Jupiter and Saturn, places we supposedly haven't even sent probes to? Uh, well, because, I, I well, because we have methods of, you know, we don't have to go to the sun and take a scoop out of the sun to know what the sun is made of. Like, yeah, you do. There are 
that there are different that you, you do not you you actually do not because of some of this process called spectroscopy where the like atoms themselves specific atoms have different signatures in a spectrum they release particular types of light and it's unique to each atom or or you know um a molecule there are transitions that release light which is unique to all of these atoms and molecules and so if we see those spectra then we know then we know what the what the sun is made of and by the way and, Mark, this is an experiment that you can do yourself at yeah, home yeah you can you can do this experiment <sighs> at home you just need uh -huh. a spectrometer right yeah so so sticks and shadows arguments the sun what does work if the sun is 93 million miles away and i i, I don't know if you, you guys use kilometers however many kilometers why it is 400 800,000 kilometers but the sticks and shadows argument also works if the light source is very close and very small and you can do this with a shadow and a pencil all day long. So again, if you want to recite textbooks on what you think the sun is, and by the way, when you say you, you, you know what the sun is without actually going there and sending a probe and taking a scoop out of it, I mm -hmm. would disagree. There's not so I guess this comes down to the fact that you are like a hard empiricist. Like you need to see it with your own eyes. Is that, yep. would that be fair to say? Yep, absolutely. But I guess in and science and science is like that sometimes too. That's where it, there's kind of, a, and again, I'm not trying to be insulting here. I know, you know, your, your background, which is the, the hypocrisy of it is that like, for example, unless there's certain things when science doesn't see it from themselves, they absolutely say it's a myth. It's absolutely imaginary. You know, the giant panda, let's do cryptozoology for a second. Giant panda was an utter myth. The giant anaconda, the giant squid, you'd still, guys, the science community would still think it was a, a myth, except that you found remnants inside the bellies of sperm whales. Or... But I guess the, the point is that science is, it's a myth until evidence, right? So until, it, it's, it's not that we, we're saying it's never possible, but we're saying until evidence is provided, we're not going to believe in something that hasn't been shown. And I, I know what you're going like, to say, that there are so many things we believe in that we have not shown uh, in, in like w with, with evidence. For example, like the, or, or the evidence that you would like, perhaps. Like you, you want us to actually cut through the earth and see a cross section. And that would be the type of evidence that you would take to be true. But I guess what's different about science is that we have this framework, which maybe we can talk about where there are predictions other than the blatant cross section, look at the cross section. There are processes that would result from the structure underneath. And if you detect the structure, uh, if you would detect, you know, these processes, then you can infer the structure from it. Got it, got it, got it. it I, I mean, I'll, I'll give you another example for this. So leaving science aside, for example, sure. I think if you're going to stick to empiricism and stick to that for the rest of your life, I think that's an inconsistent view to have because you can't go through life without at some point trusting the process from someone else. So for you example, like you religion. go to the grocery store. Well, not like religion. So when you go to the grocery store and you buy canned food, right. do you trust that what you're reading on the label is what's inside the can? I mean, yes, you trust it because how do you know, how do you trust that it's going to be edible? You trust that there are regulations in place that people have, have, are doing this properly. There's a system, there's a method and you trust that you don't have to see what's inside the can before you buy it. Ah, so but, why can it not be the point, same with science? To, to your point though, eventually you do open the can and you do eat it. But the first time you're opening that can, you're looking at it like, Ugh, I don't know. Let, I mean, if you if you want to go down that road, fine. Um, let's do your cosmology thing. Uh, do you believe in dark matter? I mean, dark matter in the sense of what? I mean, do you, do, do you buy into the theory? I mean, there's there are people octaves above you that are spending their entire lives convinced that dark matter is a thing, and they are going to go to their grave trying to prove it. 
Right. Well, so, but in the meantime, exactly they're telling people, yeah. they're telling mainstream media, it's like, oh, no, no, dark matter. That's what makes up. I mean, they're they're stating it like an absolute fact that it's well, out. We don't know what dark matter is, per se. And Hannah can speak to this a lot more than I can. We don't know what it is, per se, but we have evidence that it exists and we have evidence that is there. We can see it through our evidence. So, right. Like when we measure the content of the universe, what we measure is not, I guess what we measure is what... Um, kind of okay i'll say this we measure th we measure the content in several different ways right. and what hap what happens to be going on is that what we see with light is not what matches certain other data sure. and for the other data to make sense there needs to be matter there or or something that is behaving like matter so i guess dark matter doesn't really refer to a thing in particular, the way the core of the earth is something that we refer to as a thing in particular. But it is some missing piece that we know has to exist. Mm, and that's uh, what people are da, da, studying. Da, da, that, but that's that's point. It has to. You can't, you don't have absolute proof, but you're saying it has to exist. We, we, we do well, have it has proof, to exist because we see because it. Of we have proof. proof that it's there. You, we have so you, proof you that guys both believe in it. You, you believe that dark matter is absolutely a thing, and one day you're gonna, there's somebody's gonna come down the pipe and lay out exactly what dark matter is. So one day someone will explain yeah. what the thing that is producing the anomalies in our data is. That's yeah. what I will say. All right. How about, how about this one? Gravity, because that, you know, when we're dealing with people, not you, octaves below you, mm -hmm. that is the answer to almost every question there is. Even though every mainstream scientist we have talked to, full-blown scientists said, we can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does. We can only tell you the symptoms of it. That's and not necessarily I don't think that's true. true. Really, that's I Neil Tyson's that... words. I, I could give you a recording, like right now. I, I can see stage him saying said that. This many times, he is your Lord and God. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a little secret. So among yeah. the scientist community, Neil deGrasse Tyson, we respect him and we, we care about him a lot because he does a lot for science education, but we don't see him as a God. And he certainly does say things that are questionable. Um, so he does not. He's, he is your spokesperson. He is the press secretary of science, along with According Brian who, Cox. Who assigned him? I didn't let him be that. I didn't give does, him permission. Doesn't really matter. Me. The mainstream media did. There are right. three people out there that they talk to on a regular basis. Neil deGrasse Tyson, far and above, mm -hmm. even though, believe me, I, I understand your opinion on this. He is a cross between Sinbad and Bill Cosby. He's, I mean, he's great on stage, meaning his stage performance, he could sell, he's a salesman. He could sell anything. The fact that he's in astrophysics, weird. I mean, he, I think he could do better doing other things. Brian Cox out of England, Michio Kaku, that's really it. And then, for whatever reason, they bring out Bill Nye, and I would think you would guys have an opinion on him, considering he's an actor out of Seattle, and he's got his bachelor's in mechanical, and then went to acting and abandoned, uh, you know, the the whole mechanical engineering thing almost immediately. Got syndicated by Disney, and now he's on CNN talking about the Mars rover. So, and, if we're um, coming back to your original question, though, you were you were asking about gravity. So, what is your question about gravity? What do you think it is? If mainstream, if everyone that goes on TV says that, that they can't tell you what gravity is, they only tell, they don't tell you what it does. Your response to that is? is we, we, we know what it is. Do That's you? the thing. And, and the thing is, I, I almost feel as though, and I have this problem with mainstream media, which I think is why we decided that we would kind of start our own science um, podcast and whatnot, because there's a lot more science that the mainstream media is not talking about. And one of those things are kind of like the nitty gritty of what's going on underneath all of the, I guess, surface level popular science, I would say. Is, is the nitty gritty what, you're, what, what you may or may not introduce here? Yes. So what, what it is, is that gravity is nothing more than matter deforming the space time. It's not an attractive force that you learn about in high school. It's not like a little rope, a, a t one, one ball tugging on the other and the other ball tugging on the other with right. equal and opposite force that's proportional to their masses. It's not that. It is literally mass deforming space. And then, and then just like a hill, things roll down hills. 
So when matter comes close to something, when, when a small ball comes close to a heavy ball that's deforming space and making it into a hill, it'll roll down and be attracted just like gravity. So what, so in the globe model, I guess I'll say is, you know, the earth is much heavier than we are. So it's deforming the space time that we are in and we're, we're, we're fall, we've fallen into that well. So to put slightly different words on it, because we might get called out, I feel we might get called out for trying to explain gravity with gravity by the hill analogy. To, to put it in different words, what Hannah is saying is exactly that. It's that, gra so a massive object will deform space time. And we have precise mathematical descriptions of how this works. We understand this well, how matter can deform space time. And then objects simply move in straight lines through a deformed space. And if you move through a straight line in deformed space, that appears as gravity. And, and by straight lines, it's, it's, I guess we should be clear that straight lines on a curved surface, or as Alex said, a deformed space, don't look like straight lines that you and I would draw on a piece of paper. Hmm. And by straight line, in, in physics terms, what a straight line means is the path of shortest uh, distance. So sometimes when the space is curved, that distance, the shortest distance would be, would look from a bird's eye view as a curved line, but really it just means the path of shortest distance. So that's what gravity is. That's, that's the thing is scientists know very well what gravity is. I really don't know why popular scientists don't want to say that it's, it, or don't well, I, I feel the masses Be need or, or can know. Because the textbook answer takes too long mm -hmm. and it's still sort of ethereal in nature when you're trying to i know we're it's this is audio, audio only but it's it's tough to remember you gotta remember who's out there and, and i can't stress this enough the average person on the street wouldn't have understood any of that they, they would have absolutely lost it in fact they would have come back at you in fact even maybe a little bit smarter person would have said can you show me something in a lab that reproduces this? Can you reproduce gravity mm -hmm. in a lab? Mm -hmm. You can. We can. Really? Because you're the first person I have heard in six years say that. Well, well you we, can. We detect you can. it with things no, like... Do, 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 do not detect it. No, can you, you can, can see you it, do it directly. You can show it directly with the Cavendish experiment. Ah, and it takes, yes, the Cavendish experiment. You can... And people have done this. And I mean, I'm sure that you, you have an alternative explanation. I, but... Oh, you want me to give it to or you? Do, or do you? I, I'm not I, I think, sure. I, just I think the Cavendish experiment is unproven. I think it is a failed experiment. Plain and Why? Simple. Because the Cavendish experiment wouldn't work the way you were hoping it would work because you are supposedly on... A, if, for the Cavendish experiment to work, you're supposedly on a ball that has its own gravitational force anyway. So how would it work? Exactly. But we see it work. But not show, only... show me show me video on it when after this is over show i sure. want to see it perfect i okay. want to see it i will show it to the community and if they're convinced we'll quit this whole thing tomorrow which i would be unlikely fantastic yeah you know I what i realized we'll mark that more later, we but... haven't even gotten into what are your views exactly oh yeah 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 i'm sorry let's let's do it real quick uh the short version you are not on a tiny little rock covered in a little bit of water and a little bit of smoke flying through the impossible vacuum endless universe at velocities that are mind-boggling you are and you're not an accident you are sitting i don't know on a shelf you're not an asteroid flying in space you're not this you know you're not asgard you're basically in a snow globe a planetary materium you are in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling no different than a Hollywood backlot, and it is so big and engineered so well that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out till almost 1960. And when they did, because we didn't, I mean, the internal combustion didn't engine without that, we were never going to discover it. Sorry, so and, sorry for interrupting, but this was so just to clarify, this was engineered before our time. We were put uh, here. Yeah, we had nothing to do with this. In fact, okay. that's a. I mean, I'll steal a line out of um, contact with Jodie Foster. When she asked them, when she finally got to the end and she goes, she goes, did you build this? Because we didn't build this. We don't know who did. One of the most humbling things I've ever heard in movies. Thank God they said it. 
but no, we, we didn't engineer this. This was engineered by an older civilization, much more powerful than ourselves or a, some sort of deity, but then you're kind of splitting hairs. And what's outside of it? It's not space. In fact, we don't know what's outside of it. We've tried to bust through it for four years straight. The United States and the Soviet Union tried to nuke the hell out of it. Couldn't get anywhere. And they kept it a secret. And why would they keep it a secret? Are you kidding? Civilization was already already in place. The, the foundations were already laid. Um, it's not what they stood to gain is what they stood to lose. Academics would be just thrashed. Uh, oh. Economics, world markets have to be suspended. We might be out of a job, right, Hannah? <laughs> but, but I mean, why would that be the case, I guess? Um, why not? But but why? No, 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 no. If you're going to go down that road, I mean, seriously, the only difference between you and me is that you think the Big Bang was an accident, and I think it was deliberate. How's that? You want to so oversimplify? So you, you believe it. in the Big Bang? Do I believe in the Big Bang? Sure, but I believe that it was deliberate and it was made much much smaller, meaning things came into existence, but you didn't need a universe to do it. You but just... I guess it. I mean, one thing that's troubling to me is that you know science can explain a lot of things, like the motion of the stars, stuff that goes on you know, in, I guess, your, what you call the dome right. or beyond the dome, I guess. Right. Um, Why would it be beyond the dome? Or I guess you, there, there is stuff beyond the dome, presumably. I guess, why would you choose to believe in a theory that, that can explain so little when? Why would with, you need to explain more? Meaning if, let's do this. If you go into a planetarium, and I know that dates me, if you go into a planetarium and you look up in the sky and you see Jupiter, right? And, mm -hmm. and it's like, wow, look, it's Jupiter. And there's some moons of Jupiter, depending on which one it is. And you, yep, there it is. Looks spherical. Yep, it does. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Well, because you're, it's just lights on a ceiling. Who's to say when you walk outside, you're just not looking at a much better light show? In fact, let's take it one step further. Let's say you took somebody from another country that really didn't have any technology. I'm not going to pick on countries in South America or something like that, but it's like, it's like an Amish person that's never seen technology. And you bring them into a planetarium. Would it not freak them out to no end? And trying to explain it to them, you know, they'd want probably a simple explanation. I know that, look, science tries so the to- the firmament is some sort of like a dome that the stars rotate or something, or it's just a big projector? That, could uh, be could be either to be honest i mean could be could be front projection could be rear projection could be a, a 1 million k hd system up there i don't know but it's it is so far above us in terms of so engineering here's something that i always wondered though because i i've heard this argument before about having uh, some sort of projection or a rotating firmament whatever sure that doesn't explain the motion of the stars why you not because in the northern hemisphere you can see stars. I don't know if it's clockwise or counterclockwise, but you can very when you go down to Australia, it's counterclockwise. Yep, it's yep, counterclockwise yep. in yep. the equator. It's one direction. You can't explain that. How, on a... Do you not? Play... Oh, that's right. You guys don't play games. Do you, do you guys play any games at all? Any simulations? It's called instancing. Yeah. You, if you know software at all, and I do, uh, it's something we've done for twenty years, which is called instancing, which means you can. Uh, the easy version would be you're in Australia and I'm in North America, and you see the belt of Orion, and I see the belt of Orion, and you say, hey, my, the middle star is blue, and I say, well, the middle star is red. Who's right? And then it's, of course, turned the wrong so way. So everyone has their own individual perception of reality. Yeah, so it doesn't have, to be, necessarily, it doesn't have to, to be yours. necessarily individual, but it could be regional. I mean, that's, that's how we trick people in the, the virtual things we create now. So the deception it's, is going on, at, to some extent, it's going on inside our brains then. Some of it, sure. Why, why, why this, this shouldn't be too much of a stretch for you guys. I mean, you guys were the guys that came up with the whole virtual reality concept. But I guess my, my concern is, is now if, if the earth is flat like this. Yes. And let's say there's someone kind of in the middle mm -hmm. looking up. Yep. Should they not be able to see kind of all if they look in a you know 360 degrees should they not be able to see the same at least an overlapping region that someone at the very edge could see 
Depends. Depends how it's laid out. Again, if you if you are instancing the sky, it's something in, in software we call the um, the sky box system because it's not actually a dome; it's a square because computers can't do circles, not really. Um, you can tailor it for just about anything you want, and I'm not and I'm not trying to oversimplify the universe necessarily. What I'm trying to say is that science has a, a nagging tendency to overdo it to overanalyze everything and make it way bigger than it actually is, which well, I don't know. Could it, could so it just... I, so I think what, if, what anything, science has a tendency to try and find flaws in its own arguments. So I'll, I'll give you another oh, paradox here. You want to go down this road? See if, you can, see if you can give me this one. Riddle me this, Mark. Yes. So if I have a certain instance of the sky, okay? Yes. I see things a certain way. Yep. And you're saying that someone in Australia is a different instance, okay? Yep, yep, yep. yep. So then if I travel and I'm continuously looking at the sky the entire time that I travel down to Australia, yep. okay? So I never take my eyes off the sky. By the time that I get to Australia, my friend in Australia is looking at the same patch of sky that I'm looking at now. Are you telling me that we're going to see two completely different things? Dun, dun, dun. Possibly. Yeah. Very, very possible. Why not? I mean, first, it's never happened. And that's a great, that's one of the most original things I've heard in probably six months. So pat yourself on your back on the back for that. Uh, it's never been, it's never been tried. It's never been, but theoretically, yes. Yeah. I mean, I again, it's something that we, it's something that we do now. And let me, let me preface this, you know, so that I don't completely alienate the people that are listening to this. If, 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 if I believe that it is flat and it, and it is enclosed, there is a high degree of probability that it's digital, that it's virtual, that it's some sort of, of construct. I mean, come on, the double slit experiment, especially the most recent ones back in the early 2000s, just scream virtual. Absolutely scream it. I mean, because we, because what we were doing- As in like a glitch or something like that? or Not even a glitch. No, no, no. It's, it's okay. resource conservation. So what we do, I see. what we do in the software world, when we try to save resources, the, the, the easiest way is if you're not looking at it, you don't render it that well. Mm. You know, it's called a, a flashlight graphics. And so why is it happening here? Why, why is that happening in this world? You know, why, why is it happening? That's, I know I'm ripping off uh, the 13th floor, which was based off of World on a Wire, which was based on a 1960s book. But they've been thinking about this for a long time. And it shouldn't be there, but it is. That and, of course, uh, look up, if you want to have some fun, look up uh, neuroscience versus free will. Your guys' stuff, not mine. You know, where apparently they can, because they can, uh, I know you guys hate the, the concept of predestination where thing, you can actually register the, the human brain waves making a decision eight seconds before they actually make the decision mm -hmm. should be impossible unless you're talking about something that's potentially pre-recorded. Well, it's thing. not necessarily impossible. I mean, they have, they have hypotheses for why that is or why humans would appear to themselves to have free will. And some people have hypothesized, I mean, this is tangential, but some people have hypothesized that the human brain you know, it's, it's almost an illusion that we have free will. And it was an evolutionary advantage to think that you had the ability to kind of like control your own future and control where you get your resources. Like th there are, there are people who are coming up with, you know, scientific hypotheses about why the brain would either trick you into thinking you had free will, even if you don't. Mm. And, and in some senses it, um, you know, certain scientists are physicalists, you know, like they, they think that everything trickles down to like the nitty gritty of, of like, if a particle moves here in your brain, then you have this thought, you know, like physics, e like gives rise to your reality instead sure, of, I'm you one know, of those. I'm your one of those reality physicists. emerging from some other, from like a, a soul or, or something like that. Oh, well, heck, I mean, the not to delve into something sidetracked, but the, the electrochemical stuff where um, it's, this goes a long time before you guys, where people would think about shooting free throws, think about shooting free throws, and mm -hmm. they would actually do better. Right. And then, then we were making the connection to veterans. Uh, most of the, the earlier ones were like Vietnam vets. And like they said, they could hear helicopters. And then all of a sudden they figured, okay, wait a minute. Electrochemically, there's almost no difference between 
realizing something in right now and a very, very strong memory. Electrochemically, it was almost no difference at all. And so then it leads into, okay, how tough would it be to, uh, to plug that in? So, sorry, circle back. Sometimes, I, I don't say this very often, but it's, it's not even sometimes that I believe in a virtual reality. I believe in uh, the virtual movie that everything was, was pre-done beforehand. Like the pre-record, all decisions were made before you get in there because that is the most efficient way of doing it. No different mm -hmm. than the people that go out there and record video games and put them on YouTube. And that's what you're watching, but you're not watching an actual game happening. You're just watching a movie of a game happening. So, you know, I do have, I, I, ha I have science friends of mine that do believe that, you know, we live in a simulation and there is definitely certainly a large discussion to be had there, but I think there's nuance to it because it's not just a simulation where we have quantum effects being a, a, a result of rendering errors. That's mm -hmm. not true because for example, you were talking about the double slit experiment that, uh, you know, the weird quantum effects that we see are because, you know, we don't have certain resolution. Well, if that were the case as a, as a, you know, I work with numerics every day, I can tell you that, you know, when you have a rounding error of some sort, then it's a random error. It's some sort of a random process. You would expect a uniform, a Gaussian distribution, whatever it is. Mm. But with the, the probabilities that we end up observing with quantum mechanics are very blind and they follow the mathematics and quantum mechanics that we understand to the tooth and nail. I mean, we understand very well where these probabilities are coming from. It's not a, it's not just a rounding error that you'd expect from a glitch. So well, while, I, yes, I, you know, the idea of a simulation has certain merits. I don't think it can be used to explain the weird physics that we see and that physics is a lie, you know? Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. I mean, for me, by, by the way, I don't, I do not think that the double slit experiment is any sort of glitch. I, I think it's mm. very deliberate because, uh, and there's papers on this. People have said, it doesn't matter how much computing power you have. You're always going to follow the rule of resource conservation just because you can. It's like, why build it? You know, why, why build everything down? Resol why take the resolution all the way down to the granular level if you don't have to? And I was like, oh, my God. Anyway, sorry. I know you guys have questions. Go. What, what else you got? Well, I have, I have something what? shifting topics a little bit, sure. but you know, something that I've been thinking about is that theoretically, yes. what testable prediction of flat earth theory. So yeah. What testable prediction of flat earth theory could I propose to you that if I prove flat earth theory wrong, right. what would change your mind? That is by the way, the first time anyone has ever used those words. <laughs> When Juicy, it's like normal. Normally, again, remember who I usually talk to. It's like, what? What would I have to do to make you quit flat Earth tomorrow? Um, one of that's it's a good question. Uh, one of two things. Uh, first one is would be difficult to do because the 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 cost or the permission involved, and that is get any sort of decent camera, uh, strap it onto any any capsule of anything, point it down at the ground. Don't point it up. And let this baby, and something that's going to leave orbit. And well, we don't believe the images from SpaceX or NASA, or we don't believe any of those, do we? Or Virgin or Boeing, all of their flights. But when you say we, the royal we, like, do I believe in it or you believe you, in it? You, sorry, oh, you. You don't believe any of those images. Do oh, you? I will. You know what? Just for that, let me see. Do we have a chat box here? Yes, we do. Give me one second. And we'll talk about this one in, in okay. a sec. Hang no on. Uh, uh, but uh, to, your, to your points, one sec. There's what? Here, I'll throw this in there just for an example. Okay, so you, you got a camera, you point it down at the ground, something's going to leave orbit, take off, and um, and eventually, you know, don't hit edit, don't hit pause, and this and, and the Earth should start forming into a globe, and that it's never happened in the history of space travel. It's statistically it's extremely unlikely that that would be the case. As a matter of fact, why Elon Musk didn't do it with the Roadster in space when he had three HD cameras on it with perfect transmission and supposedly was going to Mars. Oh, we're going to slingshot around the sun and head towards Mars, but we're going to cut transmission before we start any of that. Whatever. Um, that, that'd be the first one. Give me a 4K. Give, me, give us 4K footage of, of any of that happening. It's never, ever happened. 
Um, you want something on the ground because I had scientists say, well, you know, it's going to be tough to do because you're going to have to get permission from Google X or, or Blue Horizon or, or any of the other crap, uh, Virgin Galactic. Um, the one on the ground that I, I put out there for four years now and nobody's come up with is the spacesuit challenge which is, and in fact, I did a video on it called um, For Want of a Nail, if you remember the old uh, story about, you know, uh, kind of, it's kind of like the stitch in time thing where it, the nail and the horse of the shoe and then the horse was lost and the battle was lost and the war was lost. Um, the spacesuit doesn't act like it should, not according to thermodynamics. Thermodynamics, pressure cannot exist in non-pressure without some sort of barrier. And if it's a soft barrier, that baby's going to go rigid in a second. That spacesuit should blow up like a parade float and burst really, really fast. And so my question- Sorry, I don't what, understand. You think in, so this is in the picture you sent, right? If we're on the moon- Oh, yeah, yeah, no, suit, that, that picture, no, well, we'll get that picture in a second. Okay, so, <laughs> that, but if you're in space that, and you're in a space suit- we're, You're then, in a space suit and you're yeah. in a vacuum. And okay. you can watch mm -hmm. any sort of videos you want online about anything. Every, because we're humans and we're dumb, we put everything in a vacuum chamber at some point and destroy it. So why doesn't a space suit become a basketball? Why doesn't it happen? And- People say, well, it's layers. It's some sort of layers. And now my winter coat has layers. It's the only thing that stops it. it, it winter is, is the cold. Tell me what magical thing is in that backpack, that self-contained backpack that uh, stops the vacuum of space from bursting that suit. And uh, at the very least would make it un unbelievably rigid. And yet there's full articulation points, move your arms and legs. They can manipulate complex electronics. That my challenge is, yeah, give me a, any, loan me any spacesuit, put me in a university vacuum chamber. Uh, it'd be nice if somebody else went in with me. But if I had to go in by myself, that's fine and tell me how it works. And even if you can convince me that in 2021, you know, we've got that tech, what, what, what tech did we have in 1969? So, I mean, I'll have to get back to you on the specifics of this because I, I, I don't know, I'm not too familiar with the engineering of the spacesuits, but we do have. What? certain materials that are flexible and incredibly strong. Nope. No, 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 no. no. I'll, in fact, I'll even take it one step further. You can look this up. Do some research offline on this. The early suits that they first devised for the, for the space program were metal and plastic because of the law involved, right? They're like, yeah, okay. we're going to do something about this vacuum. But they were so unbelievably clunky. They looked like B-movie science fiction robots. And they're going, yeah, well, we're never going to be able to get inside or outside of a, a space capsule. And then somebody made the brilliant decision. Again, because it was going to be faked. And I'm sorry if I offend people here. And it's going to be faked. It's like, you know, let's do soft suits. Yeah, let's do soft suits. Because no one knows anything about physics at all. The general public won't even, it won't even register. And they didn't. And it was brilliant. It was, it was perfect. It worked. It was flawless, along with everything else in that photograph, by the way. But what I don't see the issue here. What's the issue with having certain cer certain materials that have very strong tensile strength, but are still flexible? I mean, we have no, no, those they, You can't have both. Not in a vacuum. It yes, cannot can. be done. No, okay. no. You okay. can't be flexible and rigid at the same time. It can't be done. It, there's nothing you can do. And my it point is- It doesn't have to be is, rigid. It, it can be flexible and, and have with tensile What muscles strength. are you, remember the suit will blow up to whatever the shape is it is. Every time you try to bend your arm, you're fighting the suit at that point. And they're not fighting anything at all. They, they were, even, were breathing heavy on the moon. But look, look at that picture, by the way. The longer you stare at it, the worse it gets. And again, I'll give you the real simple Sounds stuff, right? The picture. It, forget, forget about no stars in the background. I don't care. People are going to say exposure settings. I don't care about that, okay. even though there's no stars in any photograph ever. Three quick things. Um, one would be uh, if there is a light source that's 93 million miles away and there's only one light source, all the shadows run what? Parallel. Thank you. Oh, that's a problem. None of those sure, shadows. I mean, this is taken with a very wide angle lens. No, but when that's going to explain the shadows running perpendicular, they're, they're going to intersect. Those shadows are all going to intersect. Fine. If, if, if you don't want to look at that one, by the way, no one's been able to answer that ever. Most people. I mean, what if, I mean, hold, hold on. Like, there's for example. That only happens if there's a light source 30 yards behind them. What if this was a, what if this was like a, you know, on your, iPhone, you take a panorama and it stitches things that were, you know, that yeah. stitches things together 
at, at inconsistent angles. Like, are you sure? Like, how this are is, we this sure is that straight this straight off the NASA website? Di date and I, time stamp. Sure, but sure, but, but we Hannah's don't know saying, if this if was multiple a, images stitched if, or if not. If you take a wide angle lens, or if you do a panorama, then even this is if what you did a see. panorama, those shadows are not going to be like that. Okay, I'll give you an, I'll give you another idea though. If, as you say, there should be a light source thirty meters behind or whatever, then the shadows would be going outwards, not inwards. Not necessarily. Why not? That's Why how shadows they? work. Look, studio lighting can you can do just about anything you want. But I only but in this see one case, shadow. The, the shadows will not. Doesn't matter. Do do not go that way and say they're going to go out instead of in. The point is they should be running parallel. Doesn't matter if, if well, you want to say they're going out, that's fine. But either way, they're not running parallel. Second, second point, ready? You see all the footprints. This is a great image, by the way. All these okay. footprints, by the way, perfect uniform three inch, four inch ash around everything. I always thought that was kind of strange because no one was in a shovel. It's like, what's underneath that ash? How deep is the ash? Is it only three or four inches? Perfect, which is what you would do in a studio. Footprints everywhere, right? Can't miss them. Okay. What's missing in that shot? See it, anyone? How about the blast crater, the splay pattern? That's a 10,000 pounds of thrust American engine under that thing. There should be a huge splay pattern. In There's fact, no there wind. shouldn't be any ash underneath that thing at all. There's no wind though. You <laughs> wouldn't... <laughs> no, it doesn't matter with the wind. The thrust itself would have kicked out the ash. Don't give me this wind thing, come on, man. The thrust would have knocked the ash away. It would be nothing but rock underneath. Not it. necessarily, because the reason that thrust knocks things away is because you have an air current that's pushing things out of the way. If you just have thrust going downwards in, in a vacuum, then it's just going to be a straight downward force. Okay. And then the, the, the sand is going to be propelled downwards and not which, move. Which, it's the which, air that needs to get out of the way and therefore go pushes in, things If you're going to go in that direction, then I would counter with this, which is my point. Okay. When we're swimming, our arms push against what? Water. When we're walking, our feet push against the ground. When a plane is in the air, it pushes against the air because what we're breathing in here is just this soup, nitrogen and oxygen. When you're in a vacuum, what's it pushing off of? It, it's not pushing Momentum. off of anything. What it's has doing to, is it's propelling. To. No, no, it doesn't have to. Has the thing to. is... It's, no, it doesn't have to because what it's doing is it's it's burning fuel. The fuel is being shot out one direction and by Newton's third law, you then get propelled in the other direction because so equal and opposite force. You can do this experiment yourself if you sit in a rolling chair. If I if I right now in my chair, the, the, if I have you're, a bowling you're not ball in a vacuum. and I throw not a bowling a ball forward, if you don't need For, to be even in a even more in a vacuum, you it's, notice these effects even, even more, more so. so in a vacuum. Offline, I in can chair. give I can show you tests in small vacuum chambers where little rockets don't do anything in a vacuum chamber. They don't yeah. do anything. But but again, let's circle back. If you want to say again, if that's your answer, but you're the first ones who ever who have even answered this or even tried to answer this. If your answer is that there's no blast crater underneath this because when they land, the ash wouldn't move at all. That's fine. Okay. I will take that as an answer. That, okay. That's fine. I mean, that, that's how you want to explain it. Last one, last but not least, the satellite mm -hmm. dish there that you're seeing is not secret technology. That is a VHF transmitter. It is running off a car battery. Okay. That thing has a range, maybe on a good day of 50 miles. And that's Morse code, if you're lucky. I mean, if I drive an hour from here, I lose cell signal. This thing is running off of no power whatsoever. It's not running off this massive generator. If you want to say it's relaying off the thing that was orbiting, that's fine. What are they bouncing off of? There's not enough power to send a signal. And they're supposedly pumping out 10 frames of color video a second and perfect two-way communication through this thing, through 200, uh, was it 237,000 miles, give or take, and the Van Allen belts. No. In 1960, well, I mean, in 1969? No. 1969, we didn't even have 1,200 baud modems. And you're saying that these guys could do this? No. But again, the general public, all they see is a satellite dish. And they're going, oh, yeah, that makes sense. That works. Well, I mean, no they have questions. solar panels. They have batteries. Not that so much when, power, man. Not that but much it's power. Not the, it's not about the um, the overall amplitude of the wave that they're that they're transmitting. It's like... Uh, for example, if they're transmitting, I guess, okay, uh, let, let's do the car example where, you know, you're in the car and you, 
you're driving in da- downtown of a city and you turn the corner and you're s- suddenly between a bunch of buildings and you lose signal, right? right? Like the, the reason why you lose signal there isn't because there isn't enough power in the signal. It's because you've had interference, but there's no interference in space. Like there's Is nothing. The, in the between- Van Allen belts aren't, aren't interference. Uh, I would question that. No. The, the Van Allen belts don't create any electromagnetic interference whatsoever to but any telecommunication, not- radio communication, any of that. You're, you're going to hold to that? Okay, fine. You're going to hold to that. We'll, we'll take it well, one I'm further. The Van Allen belts discovered by your colleagues from NASA, 1959, Van Allen. Okay. Said that it's super, super deadly, big donut, tens of thousands of miles thick. No one should go up there ever, 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 ever. And then almost immediately, NASA starts their space program. They come back to him and they say, how are you going to get past it? He's going, oh, we're going to go real fast. Okay. What shielding did you use? So the, the question I have, and you guys, you want to answer it, that's fine. Yes or no. The question I have is, are the Van Allen belts deadly? Yes or no? If you say yes. Oh, okay. Then, We're talking about the Van Allen radiation belt, which yes. originates from solar wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are the, if, if you say yes, they are deadly. And the only way to stop radiation, and I know if you guys want to nitpick them, that's fine. But it's gold, it's lead, and it's a whole bunch of water. If you want to pick other metals, that's fine. But we didn't use any of that. The Americans went multiple round trips through this thing using plastic and aluminum, which doesn't stop radiation at all. For and sure. nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody even got cancer. There's five of these guys still limping around today. Well, I mean, there was a, so there was, there's people that were in Chernobyl who are still alive. There's a, there's a Russian physicist who stuck his head in a particle collider and he's still this, alive. Just an exposure to radiation. Did you, did you, but no, this no, is no, not no. radiation. Okay. I think we need to, we need to, we need to remember something that, so radiation um, awesome. or radioactive chemicals is different from from electromagnetic yes. radiation those two That's things correct. are completely entirely different and electromagnetic Don't. radiation For- uh, are not all uh you know only the very very high energy stuff so like x-rays onward um can be harmful to your se- are cells are the van allen radiation belts deadly yeah so to- this is this is we got to know the frequency radiation. this we is gotta electromagnetic know the frequency. radiation that can certainly i don't know too much about the van allen radiation belt but i can tell you that if it's in the range that is that is deadly it's coming from solar wind so absolutely that can be dangerous but it's not something that if you're exposed to it right away you're going to die what well, if you this spend hours you in prolonged it prolonged exposure like hours like no, so, i don't I mean, know there, during there are people that so it's well known that if you fly in an airplane for example you're exposed to more radiation than you are on the ground you don't die from it though same with the astronauts <sighs> uh, okay that are in okay the oh, no, that's, that's fine the, again this is a trick question it's a trap question because on the nasa website nasa.gov there is a little video there called orion trial by fire it was made at the end of 2014 and they were talking about the orion project because you know orion they're supposedly gonna go to mars and they were saying how and they were very detailed about this in fact it won a local emmy you can look it up trial by fire how they can't test the capsules with people in it because they haven't solved the radiation problem of the Van Allen belts. I don't know why they would say that. Remember it's NASA, but at that point you're there, you screwed yourself because it's like, okay, so you've just said the Van Allen belts are super, super deadly. So what'd you do in 1969 to solve it? And again, why, why weren't those, those uh, capsules just, just crackling by the time they got back? You know, you know, Geiger counter stuff. Anyway, well, well again, a Geiger, Geiger counter is, a counter is not for the type, same type of radiation. Oh God! Stop! Stop! Don't out nerd me on this. You can't. <laughs> but it's, it's it's a Geiger counter does not measure the radiation that you're trying that you're talking about. That's that's what we're saying. So, I mean, you guys, look. <laughs> Are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly to you? Yes or no, Hannah? With prolonged exposure. Well, if I it's went, a yes or no question. If you're going to spend three hours in the belt, are they deadly? Yes or no? Honestly, I, 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 I personally know. need to see this, the spectral information about what, what, they're, what frequencies they're made of. If it's super high frequency radiation, yeah, I would not go there unprotected. But we're talking about this is, this is radiation coming from the sun, okay? We're not talking about 
uh, gamma rays. Okay, it just, just, yeah. doesn't matter if if Van Allen, remember one of your predecessors, right, comes out is, and I, says no one should ever ever go there. Did he make a mistake? Was he wrong? Mark, but again, we're talking about something Could've that we understand wrong. well here. So this isn't so again. I, I want to clarify that Han and I don't understand too much about the Van Allen radiation belts. Okay. This isn't our expertise. But then take, what take we do it. Understand, again, you're, 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 what you do, guys are doing, you're doing the whole Dr. Sp Mr. Spock on me. Remember how Kirk would always get angry with Spock. It's like, give us your best guess. I know you, you I know you want to answer in the most detailed way sure, possible, no. but that's, that's I, I'm giving where... you an answer here. I'm giving you an answer. I'm telling you that, that, so this is radiation that's coming from the sun. Okay. And I guess in the radiation belt, something's, I haven't read enough about it, but ultimately whatever's going on, we're talking about frequencies that are coming from the sun. The frequencies coming from the sun, they can be dangerous if exposed to um, in high quantities and over an exposed period of time. Got but it. so it. a, this, we just going through it on the way to the moon won't kill you. Um, How do you it know? Can be bad yeah, for NASA you. thinks it, it be might. Bad. Well, it can be bad for you, but it's not going to kill you. And second of all, it's also not an explanation for why we can send signals uh, through from the moon to the earth. I mean, we oh, can no, 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 I, 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 that was just a secondary thing for me. It all, it's all about power, meaning you, you just don't have the wattage to do it. But again, this is what Hannah was saying, that it's not about the power. The reason you lose interference when you're in a city is because uh, when you lose signals, because you have interference, there's no interference coming from. From the moon you can send six so if you're in a flat vacuum of space for example i shouldn't say flat when you're in a vacuum of space and you just send a signal then it can travel forever and ever and ever and that's why we see stars so far away because there's electromagnetic radiation coming from those stars which we see as light by the way light is electromagnetic radiation and that travels forever and ever and ever for billions of years until it reaches our eyes a perfect so. textbook answer okay let's move on to another one yeah let's do let's do sure. Let's move on. Let's move on because, um, I mean, there's so many things that I just want to learn about from you. Um, man, I don't even know where, where to start <laughs> because, well, I guess, okay, let, let's uh, just go with, with this question or, okay. or would you, is there, is there something you wanted to No, 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 no. Again, I, I appreciate that you guys are, are being patient with me because again, you you made it this far. Your other two, your, your two cohorts, they couldn't even make it here. They just, no. they would be just beside themselves. And honestly, Mark, thank you for being here. I, I really appreciate us having this conversation. No, 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 hey, Look, I mean, I've, I've done these sort of things before. I've done classrooms of, of physics people, although that was easier because they were just our, talking over each other. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, go ahead, Hannah. What? Um, so maybe let's go back a little. So you, you told us what it is that you believe. Yes. How did you get to this point? And I know you've answered this before, but I want to know like full detail since okay, okay. this is a platform that we have the time. Like uh, what did you enjoy in elementary school and high school? And then how did that, you know, what did you think you would be when you grew up as a kid? Gotcha, and, gotcha. You know, like how, how did it evolve? Cause I don't think, uh, or, or at least for me, this doesn't seem like something that just comes out of nowhere. Like, were you always curious as a I kid? Was were always, you always... I, well, no, 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 no. It okay. happened to me somewhat later. So I grew up, uh, you know, the documentary, I grew up on a rural island up in the northwest corner of the United States, very sheltered from everything. And to the point where I went to university, I didn't even know, I didn't know anything about anything. It was like, wow, so many different things. And... Uh, on top of being exposed to everything at university, uh, I didn't also didn't believe in any conspiracies what's, whatsoever. And by the way, I have an opinion on just about every conspiracy you can think of. I have an opinion. Uh, some I like, some I don't like. The ones you were rattling off at the beginning of the show, I have opinions on all those. Um, but I didn't believe there were such a thing. I, I, why would people in power lie about anything? Why, why? I mean, I knew people lied about some stuff, but I figured it's like when you reach a certain level of authority, you wouldn't lie because power doesn't corrupt ever. Anyway, so I saw JFK in the theater, uh, you know, way before the internet and uh, thought it was uh, amazing in, in that it's like, holy smokes, you know, what, what am I looking at here? Is it possible, you know, are there things out there? Are there secrets? And of course there's secrets. We there's conspiracies in just about every aspect of our lives. There's some that are media sanctioned, some that aren't. And because I never got married or had kids, uh, and I, I got into tech, 
I had a lot of time on my hands, tons of time on my hands. And so the internet was new. And so you could actually finish the internet when it was really new. And <laughs> there, you know, the conspiracy stuff started popping up and now it's like, oh, wow, this is interesting. You know, different rabbit holes went down just about every rabbit hole you can think of to where I ran out of rabbit holes. And then I was like, yeah, what, what do I do now? You know, I got, I got nothing left to, to look at. And then all of a sudden I saw this and I thought, okay, flat earth is stupid. It's ridiculous. But I caught myself when I first clicked on it. And this would, would really, I'm kind of introspective in a way that when I clicked on the first video, I actually got flushed. And I was thinking, and I comment, like, why am I getting embarrassed? I'm in a, a room by myself with the drapes pulled. <laughs> it's like, nothing should embarrass me on the internet at this point. And it was, it was embarrassing to click on. I was going, why, what is wrong with me? Right? So I went in, you know, I went down this rabbit hole and I really thought I could shut it down in about a weekend. And that's how everybody gets into it. And I, I really like, like to clarify is that nobody likes flat earth, especially when they first get into it. Everybody hates it. It's just, just most unpalatable thing you could ever think of because of the conditioning we, we've had, you know, that globe that's behind you, that's been sitting in your classroom forever. I mean, that's mm -hmm. very, very strong reinforcement. And that's just a, a little toy globe. And so I kind of treat it like a, a court case. And I don't know if I said this in the, in the documentary or not where I treat it like, could I prove the globe in a court of law? Or was there reasonable doubt? And so, you know, to your science friends, it's like, can I prove to you the flat earth? Can I, can I prove this thing? Nope, can't. Can I create so much reasonable doubt in the globe, it's the common person, not you guys, that the only place you have left to turn is something like this. Yeah, I can. I can do that all day long. And you say, well, and again, that's where science braces. They're going, no, reasonable doubt's not enough in science. I go, well, no, not in science, but in the rest of the world, it is. Reasonable doubt wins every day, every hour in court all day long. And that's how it started. That's where, you know, I, I hammered on this thing for months. And the more I stared at it, the worse it got. Because there was always these little threads. I'm, I'm a huge, huge media guy. So I, I absorb just about every form of media you can think of. And I'm a big fan of writing and plot holes. I don't, if, if a show starts, you know, too many plot holes, I'm like, you know, you, you lose the suspension of disbelief. And all of a sudden the globe started showing these plot holes. And yeah, are there, are there holes in this? Yeah, you bet there are. Sure. The Antarctic sun, but you guys haven't brought that up yet. Antarctic sun, plot hole. But there's so many more plot holes in the globe heliocentric thing that people just kept leaning towards it and they started doing their own experiments and i didn't even do the experiments i mean when when i got into this thing to your point hannah um i not almost nothing was on the internet and so i literally i said i, I got frustrated one day in february of 2015 and i said you know what the internet hive mind is very very intelligent people generally are dumb but the hive mind misses nothing especially when it comes to media and so I said, uh, okay, here's what I think. You know, here's, here's my idea, prove me wrong. And I was hoping that somebody from your community would say, okay, it's this, this, and this, and you can shut down your YouTube channel and go back to your normal life. And they didn't. In fact, I, I started having subject matter experts start calling me up from all branches of the military and pilots and structural engineers and air traffic controllers and people like that start calling me up unsolicited saying, yeah, it's not that crazy, here's why. And they start going into stuff and then people start doing their own experiments and it just kept reinforcing and reinforcing. And there we are six years. So, in fact, the, the clues are six years old, six days you know, from now. There's something, one thing that you said in there that I actually really, really, really love. Mm. You said that I can't dis. So you said, can I prove the flat earth? Nope. No, but can I show you things that make you question the globe earth? Yes. And yeah. you know what? I love that because that's actually sounds like science to me. You know, I, science. I, I don't hate with, science. With the, <laughs> we find common ground, you know? Well, I mean, this, look, is, what, I taught this is what science is, you know? I, 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 no, I hear you. I taught proprietary software for 20 years. It's not, uh, look, I was a big tech guy. I loved science. But what I started to figure out was, again, yeah, no, not offending any of you guys, is that science tended to take leaps just because they could. Or so, because the money how do you, is that where you think that, so this is, I think where we diverge, you know, cause we agree on that point. We agree on the point that, you know, science is something that you, you can never prove something 
all you can ever do is reject hypotheses. So you come up with testable predictions that if something doesn't meet your testable prediction, you throw away the theory and you start again, right? That's what science is. But this is where we diverge, you know, because I have two questions here. A, why do you think all of these doubts that you have, all of these plot holes, as you call them for a globe earth, why do you think that scientists never found them before you? And second of all, why do you not do the same with plot holes when they're found with the flat earth model? Oh, no, no, we, we do. We, we hammer, that's just it. We know everybody goes into the flat earth trying to debunk it. That's how it all starts. It's not, again, I don't go, it's like, I'm going to prove this. It's like, no, no, no. Everybody stares at this thing like a, like a simple child's toy and says, oh, this is the stupidest thing ever. I should be able to shoot this thing down. And that's the trap. It's kind of like a, like a Chinese finger puzzle or La Brea tar pits. You, you get sucked in because the more you think about it, I've had dedicated, there are dedicated trolls now that with channels just, just every day trying to, trying to hammer this thing out and they're not convincing anybody because, and it was talked about in the documentary, you may have missed it, which was the reason why our retention rate is so high. It's like, once you get into flat earth, it's like a 99% chance you're not coming out of it. Why? Mm. Because I didn't convince you. I didn't persuade you. I, I, you convinced yourself. You went and you chipped away. They, they did this kind of cool little graphic. I didn't even know they were going to do it. They, they showed someone like chipping away at the globe on their own. Well, if you're the one that tore down the globe in the first place, you guys wouldn't because you're, you're in deep. But, but the average person- mean, I guess, uh, c- can you explain that maybe? Like, what does it mean to be in deep? And what is, um, I guess- Because we want to be wonders. wrong as scientists, like, you know? We right. want to be wrong about yeah, our because that's but, how we progress. So why do we not want to tear away our, our own No, 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 no. Well, it's not that you don't want. It's nothing to do with wants. It's that, and I said this, look, if you have a master's degree in any physical science or higher, I joked about this years ago, then you're probably not coming back because you are so invested in the financially, the time spent, not even emotionally, but you're so invested in it that the paradigm shift would be too much, even if you wanted to. Uh, kind of like the pilots I was, I've been talking to. But do you think we're lying or do you think that no, we are just- No, I don't think you're lying. Not at all. You firmly, absolutely. You get, if you gave both of us lie detector tests, we both pass. The right. question is, who's, so who's right in that case? I mean, it's, it's, is it a matter of perception? Like the, the white dress, black dress thing, you know, that photograph mm-hmm. where you saw right, it at right. one or the other, you could give people in that same, very same room, looking at the exact same image and lie detector desk, they would both pass. No, it's not that. It's just that you have been, that is your, it is your belief system that you've been going down. Come on, it, we'll compare it to well, religion. It'd be mm-hmm. like trying to convert somebody from uh, Christianity to Islam after 20 years. It's tough to do. You know, but it but it happens. Well, I uh, I also yeah, want to I also want to hesitate by making the comparison to religion here because I'm I'm saying there's nothing for or against whether we should have religious beliefs, but I mean science is a very well defined thing and religion is something that's very hard to define. So we shouldn't yes. get into comparing apples and oranges. They, they are yeah, slightly but... different. I get why people want to compare the two, but I think there there are very distinct differences between science and religion and we don't there have to is, but, that, but science but... science has and i know you probably don't like the word science in some places has kind of evolved into scientism in a way where people believe i'll give you a quick example yeah I'm if that. you're wearing I, I did a video called the code of credibility which is look if you put on a lab coat and you're holding a clipboard in the street you people will talk to you because <laughs> you are true. instantly more credible because you're wearing that sure. because you're wearing that lab coat. Bill Nye's entire career is based off of a lie. And he's like, it's like what? You literally just put a lab coat on him. Um, same thing. Kind of, again, I know we big separation. I know between religion and science, they are mortal, not necessarily uh, kind of enemies in a way, but uh, there are some some similarities. What what I try? Let me throw this one more thing out which is science tends to, they're, they're no different than anything else. They're men and women that can be influenced by certain things. Objective, the pure objective science, I love it. If, if the, the planet Vulcan, great, love that. The whole concept, if everyone could be like the planet Vulcan, I think that'd be a, a fantastic concept, but that's not the case. Scientists tend to, you know, well, they can, do things for ulterior reasons. 
You know what I mean? I mean, look, most, most of the time when they're trying to make quarterly profits for a corporation, I get it. You know, they need BMWs too. Anyway, sorry. I went off the way. What, what, what else but, but, do you want to talk about? I guess my, my question is now, and you've like alluded to this several times is, um, you know, there's, there's regular people yes. and they can't believe in science or, or they don't, they can't really understand what science is really because science is overcomplicated. It's too yes. complicated for them to understand. But on the other hand, there are a couple people who have decided, you know, like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put myself to this challenge and I'm going to go and learn and understand it all. Right. Like, it's not easy. I guess. Let me put that out there. It's not easy to learn physics. Like, it's really hard. No, no it is so not. Hard. <laughs> so hard. Physics and club. Really, really small. Really yeah, small group. Really small. Because it's hard. Yeah. And I understand that not everyone wants to, to devote themselves to that. But it's possible. But I guess, are we, or I guess, I don't know if you should assume that like people are, are too dumb to ever understand physics. Like, why should we make people settle? It seems like we're making people or, or, or we're making people settle for the flat earth because we don't have faith that they can learn the real physics that is required to fully understand all of the globe earth. Like just because something's hard to understand doesn't mean it's not true. No, no, it, it, you're absolutely right. But it's the first part, but it's still hard to understand. And I, I've made this so. plea to science for some, some years now, which is look, until you come up with, and it is, it is the blessing and the curse of science, which is you get to a certain point and the, your thought patterns and, and all the work and time. And, and yes, you, you focused and you got it. You've got it. The problem is when you get reached that point, you don't, you don't want to make it available to the common man. And it, maybe want isn't even the word. You're not going to because the reason why your friends aren't here, it's beneath you. Well, that's a problem because the masses, all the people that weren't in physics club or math club or chess club or any of the other clubs is because they, they, you know, they barely made it through school. The masses are a huge, huge group. Mm -hmm. And they want something that's easy to understand, which is, again, why I put it out there. I go, look, if the globe wants to fight against flat earth, great. You know, the, soul, the heliocentric model wants to fight against flat earth. You better come up with some schoolhouse rock version of it. You guys are old enough to remember what schoolhouse rock is? <laughs> mm -hmm. the, um, if, you, if you don't do this, I mean, again, the, our numbers just keep growing and growing. I, I've talked to a lot of people, that, you know, in this. And, and. The, which is why I, I will say this, the documentary did get this right, was at the end, they were trying to create this dialogue between the scientific community and the flyers community. They were trying, you know, they were yeah. saying, well, but, but they were only suggesting it. They didn't actually, it didn't actually happen. You know, I right. think even the documentary team tried to get us together and we're worth more than willing. I was like, oh yeah, we'll go talk to you. They're like, yeah, we're not going to talk to those guys. It was right. it, with the, the, I'll give you I'll give you one more quick example. I was down in Los Angeles um, shooting this thing, and this one TV group, and I just chuckle every time. It's like, oh no no, we'll get a we'll get a physicist to come debate you on on blah 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 show. <laughs> You're not. You're gonna fight. And they called everybody: UCLA, USC, Stanford. They called everybody. Well, next and, time, tell them to call us. Yeah. <laughs> well, well be there. You're, You're you're up in the the mythical land of Canada. I, yep. <laughs> there's a lot of people don't even know that's a real thing. By the way, I didn't even know that um, uh, Victoria was a real place. Victoria, BC. Oh, like yeah. <laughs> everyone. Everyone in America thinks that Vancouver's it, and then there's nothing else. No, you you can go further west. Yeah. I I knew <laughs> this. I I lived in Victoria for a year, and, and oh, it's wow. like I I went up there and it's like, what is this place? Is it full of <laughs> unicorns and Bigfoot. And it's like, wow, this is great. So, Mark, yeah. something interesting that, that you were that you were hitting on there yeah. is that you were saying that we as scientists should be able to make an easily digestible version of our science for everyone to understand. But what if you have something that's just inherently difficult to understand? I mean, why does something mm -hmm. have to be easy to understand to be true? Well, like, like for example, do you, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, no, no, that was that was Hannah's question, which was why it, it was just a rewording of her question, which is. Okay. Just because, yeah, just because I don't get it, that's kind of Neil deGrasse Tyson, isn't it? It's like, science is true whether or not you believe it or not. What your version would be, science is true whether you, or not you understand it. 
It's like, uh, maybe. I Except mean, I it- guess it's the same kind of thing as like a, a uh, I don't know, like a, t- a tech product, right? Like your computer. I, I yeah. personally am not a, a computer hardware engineer. I, I don't know what's in my computer that's making it work right now. Sure. And, you know, just because I don't know how it works doesn't mean I know it works. Or, or for example, I don't know if, I mean, we're not, I don't know if we want to go down this rabbit hole, but like medicine, I don't know if you, you know. I believe, I believe in medicine. Okay. I don't know how many conspiracies we're going into. But she said, Medicine. Like medicine. My God. Rub some dirt on it. She's sitting on a, she's sitting on a really good point. I mean, you, you trust medicine, you trust airplanes, you trust cars. I we don't know the we, exact science behind those, but why do we trust those and not well, other? Well, but we know we know actually quite a bit. And you got to remember, there's a lot of blue collar people that work in the in the uh, the automobile industry, not necessarily in the engineering side, mm-hmm. but but everything like like the phones that you use were just an evolution of the early early PCs. We just made them smaller and smaller and faster and faster. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, they were a hands on type of deal. Now, if there was a box a magical box that did something that we just found and no one could explain how it did, worked, but we just, you know, it's kind of, uh, how should I, there's a quote I had. Sometimes I, I've said this for you. I've never said this on air, which is science is just magic without mystery. Meaning it is once it became, I find re- that once it became you know? repeatable, Science put their stamp on it, and then that was it. And it was like, oh, well, you know, as long as we can repeat it, that, that's fine. But when the general public can't, when, you, when you're talking about things that are outside our world, things you, they can't get a hold of, they have a tough time with it. It's funny, tough... Mark, because you say that science is magic without mystery. Yeah. I would define science as mystery without magic. I mean, these are things that we yeah, like look at better. these crazy things happening in the world and we, our minds are blown, but we, we can learn, we can appreciate to understand these things very well and know how they work. But they, but no they start, but on. they start out as magic, meaning that science d- takes, they start takes out as something mystery. That, it used to be, you know, whatever, whatever it was like, oh yeah, you, you distill this blah, blah, blah. And it, you know, in the early days, it was just, you know, trial and error and lots of people died or poisoned and did horrible things. And then science broke it down and, and made it safe in a lot of areas. And, and then they took the, the they, they, turned, they turned it from something that was absolutely incomprehensible into a solvable mystery. How's that? Is that a little better? Solvable mystery? Maybe? This is not sure. as, it doesn't roll off the tongue as easy, but. No, I no, guess... try... Oh, sorry. Sorry, you, 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 you had a thing. Uh, yes, I do believe, but to your point, the conspiracy crowd, especially when you get into flat earth, questions a lot of stuff after that. And yeah, they do question some medicine things, and we don't necessarily want to get into that here. That's a whole other whole nother thing. But yeah, they are suspicious of a lot of stuff. There, there, there's a couple sayings. One is, um, trust everyone, but count your change. Don't take anything completely for granted. Mm-hmm. Because again, there are people out there that will do things uh, for ulterior motives. And you know, science, science is not incorruptible. That's what I, what I try to try to tell people. Look, they do make some big mistakes. My, the only beef I've ever had with science, and I know it's just the nature of it, is that, again, if you're wrong about something, there's no apologies. It's just that, oh, no, 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 no. We're just reclassifying it. Sort of like um, you, you know, we're, we're just going to put it under a different label. We're going to recategorize it, put it back in the filing cabinet. It's fine. It's totally fine. Now. Well, but I get it. I don't, I think that scientists don't necessarily apologize if they were wrong because every scientist goes into science knowing that they're probably going to be wrong one day. It's just a I'm part of the process. Day. Yeah, I'm always it's just wrong. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but, but, but it's but, being wrong that shows you what is better and, and embrace it, being wrong. You know, it's a process of learning. Yeah. And, and I guess another thing is um, that I was thinking about while we, you were discussing this is. Okay, if the globe Earth is kind of magic, what's what's to say? Like uh, to me, the flat Earth seems like magic. Like it doesn't seem like it's equally not proven. Like so, someone has not gone up in a in a you know, no one has ever seen the disc on its own. It, it's, it's so I guess. But that but that feeds into the conspiracy crowd because who controls that access? military 
but if you but like you said if there are people in the military who are willing to provide that information for you uh, then not not in aerospace we've, we've gotten everybody else but we mm. haven't gotten aer aerospace is a tough nut to crack and really i'd be stunned if we could we could get anybody from aerospace well, well alex is in aerospace i i studied the institute for aerospace <laughs> well, studies oh no, you know what i mean full full-blown scott kelly uh um terry like, terry birds would a pilot like a, a military pilot is that oh no i've had enough? i've had military pilots but for example okay. when i i had a chance to um do a debate with terry Virts on some british thing and and they asked me um piers asked he said uh he goes are you calling he's trying to you know stir up drama he's going are you calling terry a liar you know aren't you aren't you american and i go look i'm not saying that the this astronaut here's a bad guy i'm saying he's a soldier you know, he's he's a, not only that, he's a colonel. He's a full bird so colonel, the United States at this military. Point, though, you know, the amount of people that have to be in on this conspiracy is ridiculous. No, 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 absolutely not. Very, very few people. Very. This is this is one of those things you you normally would be right. This isn't like the Manhattan Project, where you have people refining things in three different parts of the U.S. and you keep the whole atomic bomb secret. This is where the only people that have to be in on it, honestly, are the software guys, the telemetry guys. Everybody else, the guy with polished fuel system, make this, make that, and even the janitor that's got 99% of NASA doesn't have to do anything. Well, I don't know. I mean, you, 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 you do need people that, for example, everybody that works on the satellites, that, that uh, people like at Google, at SpaceX, that also work on satellites. I mean, how would, we, how would satellites work? They all must be in on the thing because they need to take into account things for relativity and the curvature of the Earth and how they map where the satellites are around the world. I mean, these all depend on a globe model. Not only that, but, you know, what about, like you're saying, I don't know, pilots that fly through the Southern Hemisphere or weather stations, meteorologists, people in shipping companies, nope, none FedEx, of those guys. DHS. Nope. Nope, none, none of, of those people. Nope. None no. Of the people in fact, that I this is this is one of those things you would you would the less the less the amount of people. What's the word I'm looking for? Less is more in this case. Uh, you do need to know. There's no better example of need to know than this one is. Uh, I I use the the movie uh, Capricorn One where they were faking a Mars mission. The United States government was doing it for safety reasons because the the rocket wasn't going to work, so they faked the whole thing. And they did not, it's very few people knew about it. And they monitored anyone that potentially could slip into it. And if they did, they were, they were taken out of the loop. No, no, you don't, you don't tell anybody. And as far as the weather stations, not... by the way, the, the Antarctic Treaty was one of the big things for me, which was the Antarctic Treaty is no joke. It's, the general public knows nothing about it. It's bulletproof. It's the only unbroken well, treaty in the history of treaties. I think that's what you're talking about, that no one can lay claim to Antarctica, correct? Not, not even lay claim. You can't even go there, down there as a corporation and set up shop. doesn't matter how much money you have. And that just was a, was a massive red flag for me. Because our world, and you guys know this, is, is based on greed and money and power. Not necessarily in the lofty levels of academics, but in the rest of the world, it's greed and money and well, power. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe and, even in academia. But, but, maybe it's, <laughs> but not, that, not, not to the same degree. Like not scientists degree, don't no. make make my, like what is considered a a good sum of money. Like oh no, scientists... no, no. I what I'm saying is nine out of every major pro ten problems in the world are, are revolve around money or resources. And mm -hmm. in this case, they did exactly one of the qualifiers I've always had uh, for going for 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 looking at a conspiracy is I put myself in the other person's shoes and I say okay do the ends justify the means is this conspiracy being done for the greater good and would I have done it differently and when they locked Antarctic down the way they did exactly how I would have done it, it which was they they knew it was like there's there's issue I mean the whole place was made out of money huge amounts of resources that the United States figured out in the 1950s and. The, in fact, they were worried. It's like, oh man, we're going to have conflicts down there for the next hundred years. And then they come back and they say, no, no, we're locking this thing down because they realize that you can't have that many people out there. All you need is one plane that goes off course or a helicopter or a massive oil corporation that does the wrong thing. You can't, you can't risk it. So they just said, nope, we're, we're going to lock it down. It's, it's in fact, it's not even up for review until 2041. We, we, that, no, it has it even possible? It's it's amazing. Uh, and so, and oh, by the way, not only are you not allowed to do anything, you're not even allowed to talk about it. That was the big one, which would say you're the owner of uh, British Petroleum. Oh my, you would run full page ads in the London Times every month saying how great it would be to go set up shop in Antarctica. And you're not allowed to do that. 
Why? It's easy. National security. Okay. Well, do you think I mean, Groom, might... Groom Lake exists. We all know it's there, but you know, it's it's a, it's a, a not very well kept secret. There are secrets that can be kept. Well, okay. Yeah. I think we're getting a little bit into the weeds here because you know I can tell you we can argue here that there have been people that have gone to to Antarctica and we can argue the different reasons for why the treaty is in place. I don't think we're going to get to to any conclusion there. What I want to do if you're okay with it, is go back a little bit to sure. talking about how it's on a, this, this conspiracy is on a need to know basis. Yes. Because my opinion here is that even if it were on a need to know basis, science, physics, technology, it wouldn't work as we have now. I mean, physics, as we understand it now is such a self-consistent theory. You know, you can't have some parts that work and some parts that don't. If this whole theory were built on a lie then you're talking about somehow the government would have had to come up with this incredibly detailed incredibly self-consistent theory that explains almost everything in the universe as we know it today what universe and, oh well, well I, what, I guess I, again I mean, if, if, it's just, if it's just lights on the ceiling then what universe are you talking about well i guess okay here's here's a question i guess off of what alex just said is Let's there's there's this giant conspiracy. There's stuff that governments want to hide. Yeah. So they start, um, pro, you know, proposing this globe Earth model right. to hide it. And this they're trying to hide it from who? From the masses, sure. like you said. Sure. What? And you also said that the masses can't understand complicated things. Right. Why would they have not chosen something easier to understand than? physics which is so complicated why did why would they choose that you mean why would they allow physics to happen yeah why would they allow like it because, is physics because, fake because i the guess people that run... all right i will speak this as as a government agent i will i will throw this out at you what do we do with the uber nerds no offense what do we do with you guys well just let them run with it. Let them come up, you know, because they're going to argue about all sorts of theories for the next so many decades anyway. And the general public's not going to understand any of them. So let them publish their papers. Let them get their PhDs. Let them, let them just, let's go. In fact, the, but more the thing is, Mark, that that doesn't work because we, the PhDs that have been published would not have worked under a flat earth model. <laughs> Again, you, you, what do you think the flat earth model is? Meaning we, all we just say, whatever's in the sky is in the sky. You guys are the ones that define it. If you want to define it, you can define it any way you want. You want, you want to alter the speed of light? You want to talk about space-time curves? You want to talk about wormholes? You want to talk about all the other Star Trek-y stuff? Fine, go ahead. It doesn't change our view at all. So I feel like at the core of this issue, it's not a matter of we don't necessarily disagree on what we see, but we disagree on that scientists or physicists, as we like to do it, we want to find a self-consistent theory to explain things as we see it. Whereas flat earthers, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys want a easily digestible idea that can be reduced down to, we don't understand things and that's just the way it is. And maybe I see things that are different to what you see and we don't need to explain it further. That's we kind change, of a, yeah, yeah, something, it's kind of a long-winded version on, on your side, but my side is this, we turn the universe into a studio apartment. That's all we, we had to do. And for everybody in our community, it works just great. And again, because it's easy to explain. I, you want to find, again, not picking on Hannah here, because it's, it's her field. It's like, look, cosmology is great. If, if that's what you think the definition is of what's out there, fantastic, great. Um, we think it's easier. And that, that's just what we, what we go with. But yes, yeah, I mean, and by the way, the, the, there is no, doesn't have to be a massive conspiracy about that because it works itself out naturally because you, your, your thought types, you're just, you're going to keep firing off, you know, mentally and saying okay this is what this is this is what this is but you know full well that 100 years ago that was different and 150 years ago it was in fact even 20 years ago you, you have different sides you guys are arguing constantly about cosmology mm -hmm. about what's going on for sure which is great 
but I guess it's there are a couple of things. Yeah. Okay, one thing because like we're arguing about things, but it's not like we're just having arguments. You know, we build telescopes and we build you know experiments to look up at the sky and we see things up there, right. and you know they agree with our models. Sure, and I guess. The issue I have with the flat earth is that it doesn't make any concrete predictions. So by, by that, I mean, you, you say that, okay, the globe earth is this model, but I can cast a doubt on it being correct sure. based on X, Y, Z. Sure. And we, for every one of yours, we can come up with three for on and our side. So, and we can and we can do it on the ground and we can do it with things that the average Joe Lunchbox can run to the beach and do it with an HD camera. But what about the things that you do with more complicated instruments? Like, shouldn't those things also be consistent with your model? What complicated in instruments would you be talking about? For example, if I take a radio telescope and I, uh, which looks at things based on our current understanding of the cosmology, we take a radio telescope, which right. measures radio waves from the universe sure and based on our understanding if something comes from radio if we, if we look very very deep and we see radio waves it means it's coming from something from a very 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 long time ago hmm. i guess so we we can make these we can make these more complicated observations well, and explain them but i feel like for me as a scientist if i were to if I were to switch sides, I would want all of my science accounted for, I guess. Oh, That's gonna, what I need. You're not going to get all of it, but then again, but why neither. not? Well, then how, why is it a good theory to accept if it can't account for everything? Because... Is it just something to believe in because you want to? No, no, no. No, no, no. no? Not at all. Okay. Because the stuff that we... Because the, the main experiments, the main points that we came up with, anyone can do. And you can do it on the ground. You know, first off, when you say, oh, yeah, you take a radio telescope, it's like, I, I don't have one of those lying around here. And neither do any of my friends, a radio telescope. But what we do have are, are HD cameras. The most, the thing that convinced so many people when it came to this was the lack of measurable curve visually. And by that, I mean looking out into the supposed horizon. But that's and, something and, that is explained as well on a globe Earth model. It, then it's why are we still why locally, are we still here why do we keep locally growing? you see things flat because the curvature is so large nope and nope. also no the curve when, you, wait, wait 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 no i gotta call him out on this do you know what the curvature formula is do tick, i know tick, what the curvature tick, formula tick, what do you mean tick, by that tick, tick. come on the man is. the curvature formula is eight inches per mile squared otherwise known as eight, eight inches per mile per mile don't feel bad i had to look it up too because i hated high school algebra but eight inches per mile per mile, which means at like 10 miles, it's 10 times 10, which is 100 times eight inches, 800 inches, and it gets worse and worse because remember, it's a curve. It's not a staircase. Well, that means that off in the distance, eventually something is going to be on the other side of the hill. It's going to be on the other side of the curve. And right. that's a problem because all the people, and I didn't encourage, they just came up with this on their own. They started shooting, started running out to bodies of water because water lays perfectly level, especially if the, the weather's nice. And they started seeing things way, way further than they should be, way further. And remember, the, the game changer here was HD technology. 20 years ago, you couldn't have done this. Now, with 400 bucks and a camera, you well, can just shoot. I don't think that's but, true, Mark. But I mean, like, we you talking, we've got, see, we've got literally boats. a thousand videos out there showing no, all I mean, the like, static yes, objects, moving objects. But you it's see things far away, but you also see them disappear underneath the horizon. No, no, you don't. No, you you really didn't look into this before you got a hold of me, didn't you? I could, no, I, I could. No, we, seen we've this. we've we, seen we the have. videos. Okay, did you see the oil rig ones that I that I had that was leading my experiment playlist? The oil rigs, one at six miles, one at ten miles. No, but the thing is, though. So okay, I'm I'm familiar with certain experiments that um, flat earthers have done, where you know you see further than you should. Basically, yeah. Yeah. but you don't see all the way, all the way. You know, I can't look here and see. Uh, I, I'm, you know, okay. I'm on the east coast of Canada. Why I can't, can't you look see east. Europe from New York? Why can't you see Japan from California? Why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? Sure. Or why, why can't Mount Everest? Ma yeah. Come on, you know this. Come on. I mean, there. 
you I know, mean, you the, can go. I know why. The, I know, I know what the atmosphere is too say. thick. We're breathing in again. I'm not picking on you. The average okay. person doesn't even know what we're breathing in right now. It's we're breathing in 80% nitrogen, 20% oxygen. Yeah, I know there's some trace gases. I'm just rounding up on, on okay. both sides, okay. which means there is a thickness to it, which means it's only 99% transparent. No different than water. If you go diving 200 feet in a summer day, you will lose the sun. It, it's gone. Why? Because the, the sun rays cannot penetrate the water. We're basically living in a thin version of water. We're well, basically that's not swimming. true because you can see the sun coming through the atmosphere. You can see the light. And it from has the sun to pass through, through the whole atmosphere. Yeah, that's my point. The point is the sun doesn't set. It just fades off in the distance. If you had a filter and zoomed in with your cameras, in fact, we can pop the sun back up. You can watch the sun set. You crank up the zoom. It pops back up. You crank it up. It pops up again. And then eventually it just fades away into the soup that we're living in right now. And we can see this with just about everything. I, I but, don't think that's true to be I, honest. I, I, I mean, it's not true. Conceived, I've yeah. got, there, how much? I would I, love I, to see that video. You. you can send it to me. After. Again, this is, this is cognitive dissonance right here. You don't, here's the difference. You don't want to believe it. And I don't blame you. I don't, I don't. But again, this is, you want to know why our community just keep trudging on like we're doing, that's the reason. It's because I didn't convince them. Well, to do I'll tell anything. you what, I have seen I have seen explanations for why the sun uh, supposedly sets. You know, I've seen this explanation on, on YouTube and I, I want to know if if this is one that you believe. They believe because the as the sun goes far away, you should see it just getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it's a, a point essentially that you can't see anymore. That's not what we see. Okay. We see that it literally goes below a horizon okay and the explanation for that that's on youtube is that supposedly the atmosphere is like a curved lens and therefore it appears that it's setting even though it's yeah, just we didn't come up away. with this term by the way it's called atmospheric lensing mm -hmm. and meteorologists i know it's not your field meteorologists came up with it and i didn't even know it was a thing which is, by the way, why some things get chopped off. Because if you take a magnifying glass and you zoom in on something, you chop off the top and the bottom off. I'm sorry, you pull back from it. Um, you can make, in fact, we can, you can make a flashlight set on a perfectly flat table with a glass of water in front of it. Sure. And this is exactly what I wanted to bring up because that doesn't The flashlight didn't work. set. No, so it works with a glass of water, sure, but the atmosphere is not a glass of water. It, and so it is. yes, there is this thing, there it, is this is thing called a glass of there water. is this thing called lensing. You're you are correct about that. Oh. But so A, the extent to which this has an effect does not explain a setting sun. Okay. Sure These are very measurable amounts of things that you can you can exactly predict how much it's some a light ray is gonna bend. It doesn't explain why the sun would set. Second of all, um, it's it would the, the, reason, why, the reason why light bends is actually due to the curvature of the earth. Light bends when it goes through varying densities of air. Okay. And yet when and we do laser if, experiments, if, the laser if, doesn't bend. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you're, if the earth were flat, then theoretically there would be no change in density as you go, you know, up in the, up to the sky. No, 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 no change in density. So of course, light... there would be changes in densities. Of course, there would be. Well, well, well because no, no, Mark, there would be changes down. in density. If it's a but pressure... listen, listen, Mark. So if light was just traveling in a straight line on a flat plane, then there would go new, go through no changes in density, and it would never bend. On a on a on a round Earth, however, when it goes through parallel to the to the earth that's when it's traveling through different densities of air because now it's all of a sudden traveling through different columns of air because straight line and a curved line do not uh you know they don't match so that's when it's going through different densities and that's when it bends a, a perfect you don't textbook have bending I, you don't I, have bending on a flat surface and i'll tell you even a third point oh is that sometimes atmospheric lensing curves the other way and that's when you see things like mirages Things are bending the other way. So there would absolutely be times where we should see New York because why wouldn't it bend the other way? You know, you can have fluctuations in density, temperature, pressure, whatever. The only way you could ever see New York on a flat surface is if there was a, it was a pure vacuum. By the way, why would you think there's no layers in a flat earth? It's not that there are no layers, but but what is Alex is saying is, is that when traveling horizontal, you're not going through those layers. Okay, you're not going through me, the layers. Let me let me do through. let me do one more thing. Uh, unfortunately, I do have to go eventually. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, let, let me let me do sure. one more thing. I want to I want to throw this at you because I know that both of you are want to address this one, because it's what it's my second point 
because uh, they bring up five five points when they say, you know, what, if you're talking to scientists, what points would you bring up? And long distance photography is always the first. But the one, my favorite though, is gravity versus the vacuum of space. Sure. So quick thought experiment. Okay. Because the movies get it wrong most of the time for dramatic license, which is if you had a vacuum chamber above you in your you know, second floor of your house or apartment or whatever, and you have a valve and you pop it, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to be instant equalization. It's going to be violent. It's going to be a fraction of a second. It'll be horrible, right? The question is, why didn't gravity keep the air in your room instead of firing it upstairs? Why? Because vacuum will beat gravity every single time. I mean, you can do this with a straw and a glass of water. It's very, very powerful. It's right? pressure, not vacuum. Don't, don't dissect it. But it doesn't matter. For, for the argument, and, and, don't dissect it. I okay, know sure. that's in your nature to dissect it. Don't do it. So the question is, when you go outside, why is our atmosphere still here? And your initial knee-jerk reaction will be gravity. So then I come back and I say, well, fine. What happens at the bleeding edge of space? What happens when our atmosphere ends and the vacuum of space begins? What, what happens there? Because that, as far as I know, completely blows away that law of thermodynamics, meaning pressure versus non-pressure, molecules versus non-molecules. It has to equalize and it doesn't. Why not? Is your answer gravity? Well, I, I think that there are other processes that keep the atmosphere in place. Like, I think there are like magnetic effects. This could be, uh, I, I'm not like, that's super actually familiar. pretty good. That's, I'm not you're, super you're familiar. The first, you're the first person to even, even come up with a, a, an alternative to that. That's also, not, that's not terrible. Mark, to be honest, there are gases that do escape. Yeah, th there are definitely things that escape. Like there, why doesn't no everything? No, no, no. Why doesn't everything escape? Well, where did Knowing the atmosphere what, what come vacuums from? Can the do. atmosphere. Well, where did the atmosphere come from as well? You do know that these gases, where they come from, is that so we are all we are in a process of equilibrium right now, right? Yeah. So we lose gases to space absolutely at a very slow rate because gravity is strong. Okay, but we do lose gases to space at that outer equilibrium, like you say. But we're also getting gases from space from things like meteor meteors and asteroids, and when things collide into space. Space, they are vaporized and they become gas. We are, that's how the atmosphere. Got so there's here in there's the first no place. other possibility. There's no other answer. That's got to be it. Well, it's, it's well not, not not it's, that we're living actually well a pressurized Mark, system. And we, we see this. We doesn't see this, for example, term, the when way, doesn't the term greenhouse gases mean? Doesn't it make more sense if it's an actual greenhouse? Doesn't it? If it's an actual physical barrier that you're inside a building. Not necessarily, because we also understand well how those greenhouse gases trap. And, and those greenhouse radiation. gases and all the other gases, they don't get ripped off by the biggest vacuum of all time. Well, that's what I was saying. So they do slowly get ripped off. Why slowly? Because it's a, gravity is quite strong. But nope. they, like I'm saying, it does happen. Gases are lost, but we're in a state of equilibrium where we're getting gases from things that are coming into the atmosphere and getting vaporized. And also, like, um, it's, it's not... It's not like those particles are, are I mean, I, I agree that gravity is definitely the um, is definitely the dominant effect of why the atmosphere is is Has on the be. earth. Like I, I don't want to wanna say that like the mag like there are magnetic effects or electromagnetic well, no, 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 effects no, no, that no, keep no, it no, on. Don't don't backpedal. There are definitely, don't, ba don't backpedal because that's actually not terrible. Th there's least, definitely suggested something. There, there's definitely like I think there are contributions for like ionized particles, like why ionized particles stay within the Earth's atmosphere. Like I think there are magnetic, um, you know, th there are electromagnetic interactions which keep things together. But I will also say because you know people might say, well, not everything in the Earth's atmosphere is ionized. So what happens then? So grav and and most of what's in the Earth's atmosphere is not ionized. So yes, but. What I will say, but it isn't my understanding that like, isn't the isn't one of the outer layers of the Earth's atmosphere, the ionosphere, which is full of ionized particles? I, again, it might, might be strong enough. I mean, hey, you know what? That's not, it's not a terrible theory. I still think it would lose against a vacuum. You but, are right. I mean, if we're just but the vacuum's here, not sucking it out. Like it's if we it's, are spitballing, Hannah, you actually are right because the outer spheres of the atmosphere that's where they're exposed to solar radiation, and that's going to be ionizing particles. So that's actually a good idea. Sure, Maybe like there's I'm, something to that, like a barrier. I mean, but, the, <laughs> but the thing is, 
Yes. I mean, like we, I don't want to mis misguide people who are, you know, scientists who are listening to this. Who are like, oh my god, the magnetis, like. It's okay. That's okay. They're going to they're going to say gravity. That's gravity, all right. Gravity. I mean, I agree that gravity is the dominant effect of why the atmosphere is on the earth, or you know, sitting. But it couldn't. Around it couldn't keep the, the air in your room, Hannah. Couldn't do it. But the thing is, I, I think we need to understand that gravity is a is a it's a force of scale, I guess. We, I think people underestimate how gravity is actually the weakest of the fundamental forces of nature, but it also, when it's, but it, it is like, um, but it acts on the largest distances. It is the weakest, but it acts on the largest distances and it can very quickly beat out other forces of nature very quickly. So the reason why, you know, if you're in a room and you have one level of your house, that's a vacuum. I think this was your example. Sure, you sure. Just vacuum chamber your, above you. You have a vacuum chamber above you and the reason, and you pop it and all of the particles go, you know, go into thermal equilibrium with yeah. the vacuum and, and, you know, yeah. spread themselves out homogeneously over that space. The, you know, the difference in gravitational potential between where they used to be and where they go just above you yeah. is like, indis is probably unmeasurable by our best, by our best instruments. Like the difference in gravitational potential is so different that thermodynamics wins in that scenario. But when it comes to the entire earth, gravity wins every time. Well, gravity again, wins from, from at that your, scale. From your side, it has to because it's the only it, explanation. I mean, it doesn't have to, but oh, it just yeah, it does. does. If you do out the math, if you write it out and you do the calculation, it does. And these are things that you can measure too. Again, couldn't keep you. You can work out all the forces. You know? But the you, thing is, the the room is a different. Wouldn't matter scenario. how big the room was. We can we can do this with and I've seen it done with big rooms. Vacuum is a. In main, well, let's just call it what it is. I mean, the pressure versus non-pressure is extremely powerful. Was that nature the, abhors a vacuum? But the thing is, the pressure difference, like what, it's it's a gradient, right? Like the atmosphere isn't just thick atmosphere, then then lay, then like I, 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 straight I, up I, to vacuum. It's a so gradient. Of, I, I see the wheels in your mind cranking on this one, but so uh, you sooner to, or later you have to get to unless unless you say. And I've had people come back to me and say, "Well, no, space isn't a vacuum." It's like, what? what are you talking so, about? It's literally a term. Mark, I mean, have it's to not a formal, formal going... vacuum, but well, I, I get, oh, but let's, we'll, we'll call it a vacuum for the sake of this. Like it's, it's extremely low pressure, like compared to what we're dealing with on earth. But here's another, here's another thing that I think we're forgetting about that right now, if we're doing this experiment at ground level, there is pressure from all sides. Okay. The reason why the air will rush upwards is because there is pressure acting on the air in every single which direction it's acting up down, sideways, sideways. That's why it's an equilibrium. The moment that you take out some pressure from the top, and that's what happens in a vacuum, there's no longer pressure coming down from the top. That's why the pressure coming from the bottom overwhelms it and will push the air upwards, okay? And if we're now at the top of the atmosphere, at the top of the atmosphere, there's very little pressure, okay? Because there's so much less air being pushed down upon it. So there's no pressure, almost insignificant pressure at the top of the atmosphere. So this atom at the very outer edges of the atmosphere is not being pushed up, down, sideways, in any which direction very much. It's really not being pushed around. Uh, so the you, dominant you, force acting upon it is gravity pulling it down. And that's why it tends to you, stay. You're reaching. You put a basketball in a vacuum chamber hung by a, a thread. It's going to expand uniformly until it bursts. Well, no, and that's because, a vacuum again, coming in there from is all pressure. sides. But because we're doing it in an environment in which there is pressure, as soon as you take pressure out of the equation, we're not going to see the same effects. Why would you take pressure out of the equation? Because we're in the upper outer atmosphere There's still where pressure. we're in a vacuum by it's nature. Just, it's just much less, but that's not the point. Shrink the macro down to the but that micro. is the point, Mark. That's exactly what I'm saying, that the same experiment is not going to have the same result down here versus up there. Down here, you have significant pressure pushing the air upwards when you remove the vacuum. In a vacuum, practically, at the top of the atmosphere, you don't have that same pressure acting on the particles, and so it is not going to explode upwards into the vacuum because you don't have that pressure putting it you're, pushing it outwards you're you're thinking too small think 
think this. In fact, let's let's go the other way. The I world feel like is you this. Don't want the world to accept is this my explanation, big. Mark. The, the world is this big, right? Right now, in this room is the vacuum chamber. What happens to the air on it? You're telling me that air is going to stick to the ball that's this big right now? Of course not. Of course, it's going to be because shredded. it's being overwhelmed by the gravity of Earth. This little ball in a vacuum chamber the size of this room. Come so on. again, Mark, I feel like you're yeah, not- I know, you, you, don't, you don't want to see it. I know, trust me. And this is why I say it is tough talking to you guys sometimes because your, your minds are already so far down that road. You're not coming back, but that's okay. I don't, I don't blame you. It's okay. But I, I guess it's not that we don't want to- I mean, like if, if, if this is really true, I mean, I want to know the truth as much as you do, you know, it's, it's not that I just want to believe in science for the sake of believing in the science I was taught. Like, in fact, I, I hope that one day I do some science that is new or that is that disproves someone else, you know, that would be great if I could do that one day. Well, sure. You could publish. I mean, more than just that, I think like, uh, for, for all of us, like, I guess for, cause for you, the what I imagine the purpose of believing in the flat earth is overwhelmingly is you get to tell people the truth. Like you get a satisfaction out of knowing what's really true about the world. It's not that you can publish it because no, no, no. no, no. In my case, it? my case, the, the documentary was spot on. I mean, they caught that part, right. Which was no, I, I don't want to do this. I don't, I don't like talking to people every week about this. This is just something that fell in my lap. I mean, completely unsolicited. I, I don't even have an agent. Mm -hmm. People just, just started calling and saying, hey, tell me more about this. Like, oh, well, this is what I think. You know? Right. See what, but see do you, you think do? Flat Earth has given you a purpose? It's not the purpose I wanted. I was perfectly happy, you know, playing video games and doing tech stuff and drinking wine in Colorado. Totally fine. This is more of a curse than anything else. So don't, don't ever think, you know, if you're going to go to that road and say, oh no, he's doing it for the, the fame and the, and the chicks and the drugs. God, no. Do you, do you really think I would go out of my way out of all the topics to pick? Flat Earth, that seems like a great idea. I'm going to turn that into a media thing. God, no, no. I mean, I was literally just trying to find the answer to something on the internet. The dumbest move I ever could have done. It was like going into a forum and saying, hey, if I put a candle in a microwave, can I make plasma? Not knowing, you know, and waiting for people to come back at me. And no. If, hey, do you think the flat earth's real? So yeah. do you, but you still do it. You still choose to do it. Sure. And if not? you don't want to be right on this one, then why at times do you not accept for example, my explanation, you don't, of, don't of, I, of, of the, of the, the gravity like winds and the, the vacuum would, wouldn't, I feel shred like the Earth's to, be, to be honest. And to be honest, Mark, I feel like you can probably make the same, the same claim about us. But what I feel is that you're not trying hard enough to understand. No, our no, 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 I, I disagree. I mean, in, I have, again, remember I've been doing this for six years now. I have heard the fact that you guys came up with some original questions. Kudos to you. I have not heard an original question in a long time, which is great. Um, in this case, again, uh, let's 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 end it with this. Sure. Um, I believe in the plot. I believe that that writing should have a certain uh, a certain points to it, and they should be believable, and for and they've got to be easy enough to understand. And if they don't, for whatever reason, now, if they're more complex, uh, sometimes it just gets dull and you're saying, well, if it's complex, it might be right. It's like, yeah, but the audience is missing it. it I, I, part of my software training was, in my was doing the proprietary stuff, was dumbing down really hard to understand time and attendance software to blue collar workers. That was my training. I taught people, it's like, okay, this horrible expensive thing, here's how you do it. And I got pretty good at it. So, but when I was, when I was doing this, I realized that these easier answers seem to make more sense, a lot more sense. Now they went against a huge paradigm of science in that regard, but I was like, yeah, but it still makes more sense. I don't, I don't care. You know, again, the, the thing that the, the reason why I keep doing it is that peer pressure really didn't mean anything to me. I didn't, you know, have a body, you know, colleagues, you know, that, that you're worried about. I'm just like, oh, you know, I, I know what happens when you get up to higher levels of academics. I wasn't, I wasn't worried about that. So I was like, look, if it makes sense, it makes sense. 
to me. And the question is, does it resonate with anybody else? And put it out there and it seemed to. I mean, come on, made the cover of what? Popular Science. <laughs> it's not too bad. I, even though they, they hated me, they, uh, they still want to talk about it, which is great. And at least that the topic was introduced. I get very, very little hate mail, very few crank phone calls. Most of the time it's just drunk people that saw the movie. So anyway, thank you guys. Thank for, you for all this. Thank you um, so much. Yeah, yeah, no, me. no worries at all. No, it was, a, I, I am grateful to you for at least getting this far. Seriously, your friends can suck it. Because they should have been. They here. can, honestly. They they can. Uh, because, Trevor and Gungeon. Uh, well, I mean, out. but but then again, that proves the point, which is like, look, it's so tough to get serious academics, which you guys are, uh, to to even engage in it. And you know, good for you that you did. I know that other people, I'm sure, you people are listening, probably going, "Oh my God, he's insane." Uh, but that's fine. You know, it, it's we we differ. I'm hoping the the gap can be bridged one day. We'll see. One way or the other. I hope so too. But until yeah. Anna, then, do you have any closing remarks? Yeah. The well, last one is um, if you want to know more about what I do, just uh, just type in Flat Earth Mark into Google. You'll find me. Um, don't take everything I say with a grain of salt. I'm not here to convince you. I'm not here to persuade you. I'm just here to give you an idea maybe you haven't thought about. But really, uh, two other quick things do your own research and ask questions. And honestly, if you think this is an interesting idea at all, and you think you got a good bead on life, don't look into it because and that's not reverse psychology. Seriously, it was like the opening of, of a book thing I wrote, which was like, don't, because you once you go down a certain point, you can't come back for it, from it. So that's the community. Anna, you have anything well, to say? Well, I guess, I mean, all, all I have to say is, I mean, thanks, Mark, for for talking to us, I know that it might have been, I, I see why you might not be, you know, willing to talk to the scientific community after, you know, how they tend to treat people who believe in the flat earth. But yeah. as a scientist, I just think that I, I really believe that science is for everyone and that no one should be left behind. And the flat earth, I mean, sun and not that I think app. you have been left a behind, so to speak, app but to I really think that everyone, you know, as a scientist, live. I feel like it's my job to talk the to everyone, however crazy clock. their beliefs might seem the sun to me. Measures the hours so and days. I will always, the moon measures the weeks I will always be willing to talk to the star constellations uh, measure well, cool. the seasons and you and years. people in your community because 12, as 12 or 24 hour clock that's what I've pledged to do. I pledge to teach people what I want to know. Would you be willing Zodiac clock? To, with if, new if you guys features, get a good response from this or world people time. say you shouldn't be giving See them a time platform is all around would you be willing to talk to another one a of our guys earth compass if that shows sure. true navigation sure. across I, and I around got a guy who wasn't plane. in the documentary weather very very good for detailed um, local weather and, information uh, I, I love him to death know what phase and, and where the moon is at all times so for sure. Why sure. does the sun travel between the tropics for the seasons? Your contact info and, and select an amazing what background. he likes doing. He loves your own or have the app change it to a new one and then just automatically throwing every up time you examples, use the app. You know, bullet fast. Add a so countdown to your next yeah, big date. Yeah, be ready for that. Learn the truth about our oh, world with the featured video of the day. Yeah, bring your friends. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, if you if you ever want to, you know, I'm I'll extend this to you as well. Like if you ever. Are interested Video playlists in different learning languages. some science or want to see, see what a real physics department wins. looks like, Circling you know, I would be happy to show you and clean like, screen features. up close and personal, Simply like what, what it is to, to do see. science. And that, I that it can, like, we, we can learn from each Zodiac other clock and app maybe is the best yeah, tool to show your friends and strangers lovely or offer. Flat Earth I don't know if I'll be allowed to do any international travel. Yeah, that's the issue. That's the issue we face right now. But we will see. Canada seems to be an off limit zone at the moment. Yep. Out. But thank you guys very, very much. And uh, if you need any of the resources, uh, feel free to shoot me a thing. Thank you, Mark, for being here. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.